Hello everyone, we are back with Group B this time, as you can see, Barracks Mini, Royal, and Hero. And to help me along with this cast, it's the return of Guy. Hello. Good morning, Guy. <laughs> what are yeah, you, good morning. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. I feel like we're almost, uh, for me, this feels like a completely different season of ASL. I feel like I've been on break for such a long time. Even that one week off, uh, you know, we're back. ASL 18. No, it's actually still 17, guys. And um, I don't know. I'm excited, man. I saw a couple of the games yesterday. They were pretty good. So I'm assuming today's going to be the same. Yeah, this group is mega stacked. You know, you have basically a premier player for each race. You've got Mini at the top of his game. Royal at the top of his game for the Terran squad. And then Hero, who's consistently at the top of his game for Zerg. And then we've got Barracks, who I think is the clear underdog in this group. Yesterday, I was looking through Liquipedia to see how close the matches could be. As far as online, you know, important matches go, Mini versus Royal, Mini versus Hero, they're about 50-50. But one person here is a clear favorite versus the other. Royal has like a 75% win rate recently versus Hero. So yeah. maybe this is going to be a tough group for him. Yeah, I mean, Royal's been uh, uh, in my... Well, you know, in the season where he won, I think he was on top of TVZ. And that was when, you know, people were... I mean, he has a lot of competition in that in that area because all the Terrans have insane TVZ. If you think about Rush, uh, Light, and JYJ. I mean, JYJ also won the season that he won off of TVZ. So... But I always thought Royal kind of had the best among all of them. And I think he definitely, I think he probably has the highest win rate TVZ in ASL, uh, even compared to JYJ. But I know he, I think he had the highest win rate in, in spawns, in sponsored games for a long time. So this guy's a monster. Uh, it is going to be hard for Hero uh, against him in the first game. So. But yeah, I mean, this this group is stacked, man. Yeah, I think we could have some great games just like we did yesterday. Also, even though I think Barracks is underdog here, you know, in the round of 24, he crushed yeah. Rain with his six-fact timing. And as I've mentioned, you know, four-fact, five-fact, those types of timings are kind of meta. And I remember in previous ASLs, Barracks was doing four or five-facts. Whether he does a timing or expands, feels like this meta kind of fits him. So there could be a scenario where maybe best of one, he can snipe many or, you know, later on get a snipe versus many. Yeah. Well, I totally agree with you. I think uh, the best of one format and especially if you win, I mean, at the end of the day, like you just need two wins. Uh, if you win your first two games, you're through. So it is possible that Barracks maybe can perform an amazing upset. Um, I think Mini is going to be a high, like a taller order though than than Rain was. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the that meme Jinjin video about Rain and his practicing for the group. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Rain wasn't playing much for that group. He was playing mostly League, and as we all know, Barracks is a super hardworking player, and he honestly, as you put it, basically smashed Rain. So. Uh, TVP one, best of one, it can be very tricky. Do you remember what the map? Oh, it's going to be Apocalypse. Yeah, it should be Apocalypse first. Yeah, Yesterday. so... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I was going to say in, in TVP, it can be very random. Like, or, I mean, you can get those games uh, where there's like a pretty significant build order win if, you know, Barracks chooses to play like that. So, you never know. I mean... But it would be an upset. Yeah, speaking of build orders on Apocalypse, yesterday I was losing my mind when I saw a forward gate get denied by a 14cc, and then a proxy yeah. robo also get denied by the 14cc just rallied Marine. I didn't know what the hell was going on, because I don't think I've ever seen a 14cc be able to hold something like that. Yeah, unfortunately it wasn't enough. Yeah, I think, uh, JY, I don't know, 14cc seems pretty good in this matchup these days, so we'll see if it gets explored more, but uh, that was an insane game. Even versus Protoss, you think it's possible? Like, I, yeah. 
Because a lot of Protosses, I think, uh, if they don't uh, Probe Scout, or if they go 12 Nexus, or if they s skip their Zell, I mean, there's a lot of ifs. But <laughs> yeah. I think it's it actually wouldn't be a bad build to play more. I, I don't know. Especially on four-player maps, man. A lot of Protosses, they don't even Probe Scout anymore, dude. You'll see. I think uh, you, maybe you'll see a nice uh, meta shift at some point. Well, maybe I'm just... JYJ not... sold me is what I'm trying to say. Okay, well, maybe I'm just not feeling it when I play myself on the ladder. Maybe I just run into too many pe players that rally zealots in my face. Well, the ladder is not the place to do it. Now. Oh, it's not? No, it's not. That's like uh, <laughs> trying to go and command center on the ladder against Zerg, and then they, half the time they're four pulling you. Oh, the, yeah, I know. Yeah, I think you gotta pick. You gotta pick the right moment. You know, you gotta pick the right opponent. Yeah, I think I think the Zerg players have heard me talk about how turn rate ten. You know, there's really no point to play Zerg versus yeah. Terran in turn rate ten. They're, then they've finally learned. Like, well, I can still sometimes snipe a win with a four pull. Let's just get this over with. Because you're right. If, if it's Blitz, I almost always go, like, 10 racks or 9 yeah. racks or something, because I know well, the 4 pool's coming. Let me tell you something. I played a you game yesterday. It start The game started, and as soon as it started, my opponent paused the game. He said, one moment, please. Mm. Then he unpaused a minute later, and uh, lo and behold, a minute after that, there was Lings in my base, 4 pulled. Well, he needed to size up his build, man. He needed to make sure everything was to perfection before yeah. he put down that four pool. Can't mess anything up. Yeah, he had to. He took out his ruler and started measuring all the different mineral <laughs> spots. I've never seen that, dude. I mean, that's that's ladder. So you know, you're you're telling me, oh, my uh, command center first doesn't work on the ladder. I mean, this guy's pausing the game so he can four pool me a, a minute later. Mm, what a gamer. Yeah. Yeah, he. I think he he sniffs glue. I mean, I do too. Sometimes it smells yeah. good. But... Uh, well, this group um, or this intro is going quite long here. They got much to say about this group. Maybe Hero feeling himself this game or this tournament. It's something about Mini here at the bottom. Uh, like maybe he's got a higher win rate versus Mini, but I feel like, like I was saying, I looked them up, their stats, their online results, whether it's in ASL or Ultimate Battle, Mini versus Hero is quite close, it's like, you know, 52, 48 or something, like really, really close. Yeah, yeah which is, uh, well, it's slightly surprising because Hero has such a godly CVP, but at the same time, I think Mini's PVZ, I mean, it's won him a couple of ASLs at this point, so... It uh, looks like the players are giving their resolutions for today, which probably involves winning. Yeah. And best of luck to all of them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll be getting into the matches pretty soon. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about you a little bit. Talk about how you're switching games on us. You've got a new game in the arsenal. You got Baldur's Gate 3. What are your thoughts uh, so far on that? Yeah, well, are you ready to play Baldur's Gate with me? Well, funny enough, I have Baldur's Gate 3. I think the real question is, why didn't you play with me? Wait, you do? When Did I you play it? it? I've already played it, man. You finished it? Well, I didn't finish it, but I got... Oh, wait a minute, let me swap yeah, the screen gotta, right now. Yeah, they gotta see us talking yeah. about this. Well, I, I didn't finish it. I actually got really close to the end. I've already got like 100 hours on it. It's a really long game. It's actually really yeah. good. You know, I'd never played a D&D &D game before. Yeah. Didn't think I would like it. Actually, really good. Kind of felt like an old school type of game. And you know I don't play a lot of games. So if I say something's pretty good, it must yeah, be pretty you, you good. Yeah, you don't like Steam games. Yeah, I tell you. can always memes on me whenever I play a, video, a game that's on Steam, uh, which is basically all of them yeah he's like yeah, i don't play that it's steam game <laughs> okay <laughs> well um well we have to play are you gonna remake a character with me i guess i could it, the thing with Baldur's gate is i know it's so long you know how did you play it but you were playing alone i was playing with raz and machine oh and my god of, that sounds yeah, amazing yeah and one and one of our other friends but it's hard to coordinate man that's the thing when you have four players it's hard to coordinate getting them all together to play yeah. so i ended up playing alone basically for the rest of it um but yeah it's fun it's kind of hilarious some of the um choices you can make i ended up Absolutely. picking paladin 
I know you yeah. told me you played. Of course you would. You're like uh you're the most like uh what what is it like uh good uh order good whatever. Yeah. What what are the alignments? I keep forgetting, man. I don't know. I'm not an RPA. I I can't remember either. Uh, we're we're cutting back to the ASL screen because they're showing the groups. As we saw yesterday, Sulky and Beast who made it out in Group A. Some of those games really close. Some of those games, you know, over in a heartbeat. Today we've got Group B, which as you can see is Mini, Barracks Row, and Hero. Looks like. Oh, actually, Season 9, Barracks actually beat Mini. Now, Season 9, to be fair, was a long time ago. And, however, that second stat, recent games, Mini 7-1 and one versus uh, Royal. Se yeah. Season 13, that's crazy. And then, actually, 7-3, and three, Hero over Mini. Okay. And then 2-0, and oh, Hero versus Barracks. 4-1. and one. Royal over Hero. So there that's what I was kind of talking about, how Royal has kind of got Hero's number these days. Yeah, these are good stats, and I, I feel like I remember a lot of these games. Um, I remember Royal played Mini in one of these in one of the seasons uh, in the round of eight. And that was uh before a bit before Royal was, you know, kind of established as God mode and before he won uh, the ASL. So I think this must have been like around seasons, like anyway, before 14, like 13, 12 or 11 or something. And he had lost against Mini, like Mini pretty much gate kept him. That was when, what was that map? Uh, whatever. I'm not going to go on this tangent until, but, and then I remember uh, Mini versus Hero when uh, Rachnoid or Arkanoid was mm -hmm. uh, in the map pool. Yeah. Arkanoid. Yeah. Were you watching ASL or you were watching ST? No, oh, dude, the orange map, man. <laughs> I know you. No, you're definitely trolling me because I know you remember that game. I don't remember. Uh, dude, actually, they played actually, a best of. It was. I don't know if it was in group or if it was best of five, but you were like 3 0 mini or something. Actually, I do remember a lot of the Arkanoid games were pretty good. Like, you had players rushing to knock down all the buildings really quickly and they hit like. I, I think I think I do remember that because I was talking oh, about how lawful is he gonna lawful good lawful good you're a lawful good yeah lawful guy. good I, I was talking about how hard it would be to defend like three positions on Arkanoid with cannons like it feels like it's just yeah. an impossible map for Protoss to play if Zerg plays anything aggressive yeah I mean it was it was a Protoss graveyard yeah. um of course they have to have one of those maps in there. Well, they get redemption this this season because Troy in the map pool, and even though we've only seen one game of Troy, which was Bisu versus some Terran on there. I mean, Proxy <laughs> Gates just crushed him. Bisu versus Light. Bisu, I was going to say Light, but I was like, is that right? It's like, yeah, I'm here to back you up, Thank man. you. I, I forgot. Sometimes when games like that happen as a Terran player, you just need to erase them from your mind. You Sometimes know? the lawful good needs the chaotic evil to balance it out. And the game is ready. Mini versus Barracks. Game number <laughs> one. Apocalypse. Let's get into it. Okay, in the top middle, former ASL champion, it is Mini, and in the bottom right, we do have KT Barracks. Maybe at some point, all the introductions will involve former ASL champion. It could happen, man. There's so, been a lot, man. There's been a lot. Yeah. There haven't been many back-to-backs uh, -back in the past couple seasons. I mean, any, none. I think the last back to I mean, Mini won... Uh, a couple of seasons ago and that was his second so i mean not even back to back just multiple winners and then before that it was queen uh we'll have to see if uh, this season maybe sulky can pull through i mean he had a he had a godly performance yesterday so he's looking on top of the world honestly yep he was playing pretty sneaky in some of the games and of course crushing through in other ones uh, but yeah he's looking pretty good we've got mini with an in base pylon so no aggression Damn, I'm excited. I, we can finally talk about StarCraft now. I feel like I haven't mm. done this in, in eons. And yeah. let me tell you, the first building that's ever put down in these games is uh, 
pile on in a depot unless uh, your name's Artosis and you're putting two Praxis in the center of the map. Yeah, he is someone that does that. <laughs> he does do He does it. He even does it versus Zerg and you yeah. know it's effective. Now, yeah. uh oh, this. Okay, kind of a weird barracks placement. I thought we were going to have maybe a gasless expand, but this is going to be an 11 gas. And look at that timing, Mihai. Yeah. 132. Yeah, it's good, man. Um, yeah, we should tell the we should tell all the viewers about the minute uh, minutes. Thirty two guys, twenty one factory. Look out mm. for that. Perlos, who cares? I mean, they, they, yeah. they don't need the mineral boost. <laughs> I, I, can they really even get much faster? Uh, um, can they boost? Like, can, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I yeah, know I mean, they can boost, but can they like boost like? No. Zergentaren. Oh, okay. Well, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, yeah, yeah. Not the same. I think, Zer, like, basically the Nexus is overpowered. Like, oh. In case you guys, uh, and this is actually not common knowledge, but the uh, the main building, the Nexus command center and the hatchery, it has like different drop off points depending on the race, and that's why you know before people used to think, oh, it's the workers. They have like faster acceleration, deceleration. But it's actually how they bounce off of the of the gathering point or whatever, the drop off point, and it turns out the Nexus is just the best uh, building, and that's why uh, Protoss has been mining better than the other races for years now. I'm watching this these probes just bounce off the top side of the Nexus, really getting efficient mining. Factory coming down, almost complete already for barracks. Oh, look at that! It is going to be. I imagine he built a goon, but actually, I mean, actually, I don't think he built the goon. Was it Shriek Nexus? Uh, no, he's he's definitely he has a goon building, okay, uh, just no range. Uh, but see, in a game like this, command center first would have been insane. <laughs> yeah, I would love yeah. to have gotten 14 CC versus. Oh, look at that! See ya, probe, and now, oh, we've got oh. a one base. What's this? You never see one base factory starport. Yeah, I mean, this can only be a Vulture drop, so... And this is good for for uh, Barracks because Minnie went for no range, which means there's no way Protoss can put on pressure with the goons. They just don't fight well against Marines. And uh, now Protoss is playing in the dark. Yeah, and we'll see what Minnie wants to follow up with. This goon is not getting any intel at all. I think Robo has already started. Yeah, Robo already started, so gateway count is really low, goon count really low no range he's because he's gotten this pressure out with the marines he can actually just go straight vulture doesn't have to build a tank doesn't have to build a bunker keeps yeah. the goon back so actually this drop could do devastating damage because of how fast it is yeah well this drop has to do a lot of damage though uh yeah. obviously Terran is compromising their economy quite a bit protoss on the other hand it's very hard to play in the situation because you don't know what's happening so you're kind of defaulting to assuming the Terran expanded, but this robotics and the observatory is not going to be in time. So essentially, he's going to have to defend this because he's getting no poking done with these goons. Maybe he'll get another piece of information here, seeing the two vultures soon. Uh, but he's going to have to defend to defend this drop on reaction. Of course, he has a double nexus production, so he is expected to lose a couple of probes. But how many will he lose? Yeah, I like the Sim City going down at the natural for many. It's going to be important that he has a very tight sim city because with it being non-stop vultures this is probably going to be either three or four drop in the main and i actually think barracks will be able to rally vultures even to the natural at the same time so we'll okay it's actually gonna be three in the main yeah and four he actually main. went for a support base so he only has one gateway absolutely no dragoons in the main uh no observer anytime soon so actually if barracks saved a couple of these mines he can i think he he might potentially end the game here Barracks oh. trying to find the optimal spot. How? Goes, holy! Well, well this is, the vultures are coming in. Yeah, this is when you know that this guy has played versus this particular opponent a lot because that was literally the only spot that oh. didn't have vision. He got some probes. He got the zealot. There's so many probes falling at the same time. Okay, there's no run by into the natural. I thought he might. Oh! Oh, oh my God! And that's all it takes, Nyok, and the game's over. Look at the supply <laughs> dropping for Protoss. I mean, if Mini somehow comes back from this, uh, he's the greatest player to ever touch the game. 
possible. Yesterday we saw a big mine hit, but not as big as that one this early in the game. He has killed so many probes. And at the there he goes at the front. He's gonna continue to attack here. He still got his dropship alive, so he could start elevatoring something in the main. The shuttle, I don't think. Oh, it does have a reaver, so Mini is actually going to push this back. But behind this, Barracks is not all in. He's got a command center. In fact, it's done. But he, look at that. No mining, no probes at all in the main. Oh my god, dude. Barracks with his preparation, man. He's looking like a god. I love this. Uh, you know, a lot to, to talk about here, but just. Uh, that was probably the worst build you could choose uh, from Protoss' uh, point of view. I mean, he was just assuming Terran expanded. Uh, he went for that one gate into Reaver play, which is probably the worst thing you could do in this situation. And now Terran, I mean, you know, of course, I was <laughs> I was ready to call this, man. I mean, I was just so pumped seeing that Vulture connect, the Mind connect as a Terran player. Uh, of course, Mini can still play from here, but the... Uh, you know, the plan from Terran here is pretty straightforward. We're just going for a nice two base five fact timing. And this overwhelming worker advantage is going to carry us through. We'll see. I mean, maybe Mini, if he can get into the base with this Reaver and Shuttle, which is hard at this point because he needs it to keep defending. Yeah, I, I don't think the Shuttle's ever going to get in. Even though there's only one Wraith, I do think at some point, Barracks may potentially build a second Wraith and then the Shuttle's just completely shut down now mini does see everything with his observer he sees that there's already three factories late armory mini he's recovered his econ decently maybe he's up to something like 25 probes or something like that but he's definitely way behind to see Terran up 20 supply at this point is obscene like it just never happens yeah i mean we saw basically no no workers in the main for mini and the other part of this is that Protoss, at this point, uh, wants to be expanding to the third base. I mean, not at this point, literally several minutes ago. Um, so his third is delayed, and I, I mean, this is just... <laughs> Terran would have to blunder very, very hard here to, to lose the game. And uh, honestly, I am kind of surprised that Mini didn't even take the risk to just move his shuttle out with his reaver because the only way for him to come back in this game is for the shuttle to get in somehow they're not being some turret coverage at, at a key location and the reaver killing a bunch of SUVs. yep and now with the reaver just playing defensively karen can do whatever he wants he's going into a five fact and as i stated this is generally what barracks has been playing when he gets into the asl so He's going to be feeling like he's in a comfortable position at this point. Really good goon control right here. He's going to kill two out of the four vultures, eliminates all the mines also. But the real problem is, is tank count's getting bigger. There's no third nexus. I think Protoss still only has two gates, absolutely no production at all. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not so there's not much you can do as Protoss. Like, the most economical thing Protoss can do is to keep making probes off of two nexuses and he still needs to make a couple units to not outright die so there's only you can only accelerate this third nexus so fast and I think Mini's plan is to just get a shuttle with double reaver and speed to oh, maybe no. okay even the mine connects there to, to try and and delay this this Terran push but he's just so far behind I mean there's really not much he can do like again Terran has to blunder significantly, but if it comes down to straight up, like, to just any fight whatsoever, I, I don't see that happening. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. The dropship was spotted, which is why you see these goons moving into position, and getting rid of this dropship is going to alleviate a lot of pressure. However, the two vultures still unload. He's going to pop one, two, two, vol uh, two probes there, so that's okay damage. But look at the supplies, again, up 20. That's five fact production. What's that? Okay, six fact production. Tank count seems like it's almost 10 or so. Yeah, I mean, Barracks even got more probe kills and six factory. I mean, if you take a look at the mini map, there's only two gateways yes. in mini space. So doing the math, I think six is greater than two and 100 is greater than 85. So Protoss is gonna need a miracle here to defend. 
Yeah, whenever I play Protoss, a lot of times I also only have one or two gateways. But the thing <laughs> is, I have like six star gates behind. You got the other, the yeah. other gates. <laughs> yeah, I got the other gates going. So this is gonna be pretty rough. I think he's doing what he needs to do, which he's got that Reaver on the high ground in a tiny in the in the choke. But he needs to have some big shots. It is uphill, so it will be a little bit difficult. Well, never mind. He just walks right up here. How many shots can he get off? Okay. Well. That was close. That was close to what he was needing to defend this. If those two reavers connected on like four or five tanks, which was looking like there, it would have been uh, it would have been what he needed. But still, with the six factory production behind this, I don't see many gateways uh, in in Protoss's main that I can tell from the mini map. And now the vultures are getting into a nice position. They're going to kill even more probes, which is going to buy Terran even more time. Yeah. Uh, if, if he chooses not to push right away, but he is going. Yeah, the key thing with the Vultures is it draws all the units back, which allows Terran to move across the map. Now, we saw yesterday JYJ try and move up into position like this and got absolutely crushed by Bisu's army attacking uphill. But Barracks, he had no uh, no pressure right there. Now he's on the high ground. And Protoss it still hasn't dealt with these Vultures, by the way. So he's in big time trouble. Yeah, and I mean, it's games like this where the, it's just the lead for Terran was so insurmountable that it's looking like Mini just is getting completely outplayed, but there's just nothing he can do about this. He's trying to stay in this game. He's trying to play a straight up game, but he's pretty much behind like a whole two minutes or something on, on the, the timing curve. So uh, Barracks getting in the in position, just so many tanks. I mean, Barracks is taking his time. He knows this is okay. Okay, so... Counter? I don't know what's in this shuttle, but I know Mini is someone that will spam DTs like this. So if he runs in here and like focuses down the commsat, as as troll as that sounds, the game could get weird. There's a reaver, double reaver. Oh, the goon oh. dies. Oh, big shots. Oh, however, he's just going. Look at the army. It is huge. But like I said, Mini will spam DTs. Two DTs there, channeling his inner Yugox. Everybody's played him <laughs> on the ladder. Uh, he took out a commsat. Look at that. I'm yeah, telling you. Okay, dude, if Mini wins this game, I can't, man. I, I will, I can't, but uh, Barracks, though, he already has dude, SCVs. Dude, he's, he's focusing which, the comp set. Yeah, yeah, but he's already building turrets. Uh, Barracks is, is not a... He's playing super well, and I think he can rebuild these comp sets. I mean, the Reapers are getting a lot of damage against the SCVs, especially. But just the the amount of supply here at the front door is, is overwhelming. <laughs> Non-stop DT production. <laughs> I was I was kind of trolling with my statement of focusing the comm set, but he's actually doing it, going mass DT. Reavers are still alive. Oh, the massive shots. If Mini holds, he's actually dealt a lot of damage, but I don't see how he's going to hold with just five DTs into that massive army. I mean, honestly, he's killing every single worker in the game, and... I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. The Wraith is out though, it will eventually kill these shuttles, but that's that's actually no... Uh, Terran has no workers. I mean, he, I think he has fewer workers at this point than Protoss does. Obviously, Protoss is relegated to one base. He has no army supply. Um, so, this was a 25 kill Reaver. Yeah, he did obscene damage with it and supplies. If you didn't know how the early game went, you would be saying that this is a really close game. I think, like you said, Terran has no workers. So even though the supply is really close, 92 to 82, actually, you know, it's a massive army advantage for, for Terran right now. And Terran's going to push in here. Yeah, I was going to say Terran has to push. It's hard when his comp stats got killed, but he has to push because eventually Frost can kind of uh, come back just oh. spamming shuttles and units. But yeah, I mean, the lead was massive. I, this is really close. I mean, he's still killing the comp stats. It is going to be a base trade, but Terran just has oh. too many units. Yeah, Barracks has had enough of this. He's like, all right, well, if I'm not going to be mining, you're not going to be mining. And these DTs, can they get to the choke and hold position? answer is no he's able to retreat to the okay i don't even know where those units came from but those are a billion vultures and that army's gonna get blown up yeah i mean i i gotta admit i'm surprised at how this game went um this was a lot closer than it needed to be taren was so far <laughs> ahead uh and it's still looking like you know pronos can play this but at I mean, it's not over because he doesn't have a comm set, so he can't actually push in. And Protoss, well, actually, funny enough, Mini doesn't have enough money to build a goon, 
So the Wraith is killing the probes. Yeah. Well, this is... Honestly, if I'm barracks, I'm really sweating after this one because this was so close, Nyokin. And I mean, he has enough money for a comp stat, but I, I think he still has workers. I don't know what it is that's working, that's uh, moving across the map. I really wonder if Terran has any SUVs left. I. Dude, it, this game's not over. Barracks, look at the money. He has 38 minerals. He ha okay, he's gonna be long. Look at that. That's a. Uh oh, oh, oh. Kills the DT. How many DTs are left? There's a Goliath. Pushes that back. That shuttle is going to die. And Barracks will start long distance mining. He has still no scan. He's just sacking tanks to get probes. He wants all of them. That's this is just so funny. I mean, many, uh, if not many people know, he, he is a former Terran player, so he understands the pain. Well, uh, now it all makes sense. Now I know why he's spamming the D DTs. He's got Well, that now you know why he's just a god mode player yeah he's he's spamming those 40 damage invisible zealots no i mean this was a uh, this was really oh. impressive from from many to be honest like he he literally almost uh almost salvaged this game but uh, i mean he's 15 supply and uh th there's no scan i guess there's no scan right now but uh two he, health he, he killed the he killed this um the goliath I mean, what's likely he what's no uh, maybe we'll get a draw? Uh, I don't think we're going to get a draw because Mini doesn't have... Mini doesn't have money to build anything. Yeah, but if uh, Terran doesn't have oh, any money... Oh, he If Terran doesn't have money to build a comp stat, yeah. he can't end the game. Yeah, that is true. Oh, there's this fresh DT. There's... Are we... Is this, is this real life? This might actually end in a draw. This is crazy. Dude, there's I, no way this is happening. I think every DT is here. So what he needs to do, or what Barracks needs to do, is just counter and keep one. Oh, he's got a goon! That's, uh... There's just no oh, way there's a DT right there. I mean, there's an SCV right there. It, Barracks doesn't realize there's an SCV. Ooh, from Does downtown. Have a turn? Uh, the, I mean, the biggest. No. Uh, where's his comps at? It's at the bottom there. I think. How did we get to this point? He well, has no comps at, man. He has no land command center. He, he can't even build anything anymore. He has one S. I think he has two SCVs. I think bottom left, there's an SCV hidden. I mean, let's get this straight. Um, yeah, let's there's no way Protoss is uh, playing for a win, but Terran can still win. Uh, Protoss is playing 100% for a draw right now. Yeah, that is definitely true, because Terran can just lift. Oh, there's a Wraith. Uh, and yeah. where's the goon? Is the goon in the other shuttle? I think it is. Oh, he, he's trying. <laughs> Look oh. at that observer just looking for the command center. Actually, no. You know what Barracks can do? Is he can float his command center oh. across the map, which is what he is doing. But there is one goon, and uh, he actually doesn't have money for... For a comp set. Yeah, he doesn't have money for anything. There's a DT. Uh, wait, he he's not gonna be able to build a comp set. No, he's gonna have to long distance mine. You can see his command center is floating. I think it's gonna float to the natural mini, and try and use that turret that he's built there to escort an SCV to start mining. This is so incredibly hard what mini is doing. He basically has to kill all of these units with just DTs, but. Terran still has mines, so every time he drops a DT, he has to. Any time he drops a unit, he has to pick it up before the mine actually connects with the damage, <laughs> but it has to go off. So, uh, defending this is going to be super technical for. And he's trying. Okay, well, he killed the SCV. Now he knows there's no more. Okay, oh. wait, there's another SCV here. Yeah, he doesn't realize. He thinks that the command center that's going to top left is the, the key building, but there's actually a hidden command center at bottom left with one SCV mining, and that's all Barracks needs, is he just needs to get 50 minerals, but he can't lose his whole army, his tanks are going in. Uh, is, no! I mean, is there a, uh, he still has a goon, so technically he could, I know, but actually if he can't make any flying units, Terran can always just split the building to the edge of the map. Uh, so I, I don't think it's possible for Terran to lose. I'm, like, I'm actually thinking, is it possible for Terran to lose this game? No, it's impossible for Terran to lose this game. Well, but let's say this. 
Barrington's starting to build more SCVs. By the way, he yeah. lost his academy, so he still cannot build a commsat, even though he has the money for it. And, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I think, I think Protoss is about to tap out because, well, he's not no, about he's to not. Oh my god, that was a huge amount. <laughs> he has one DT left in the shuttle. But, oh, oh my, my god, god, are you serious? He literally just, he killed that entire army with one shuttle and two units inside of it. I can't believe this. The Observer still hasn't spotted bottom left. Now we've got a DT trying to save the day versus the fastest, fastest unit in the game. This is the craziest game I've ever watched. Uh, I actually don't know if he has a unit in the second shuttle. He needs to stop this command he center from... He just has this one DT, that's it. Oh, he has, oh, a, he probe. has a probe! Okay, but... You know, yeah, but the probe can start killing mines. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's... <laughs> but he can't, uh, he can't build anything. Uh, it looks like... I mean, this DT will have to... It, well, Barracks does a huge blunder losing all his units because now he can't... Like, what is he... He can't actually kill these buildings. So, if uh, if Protoss scouts this uh, command center, yeah. which I'm, uh, so here's the thing, right? Like, if this game actually gets into a draw position, I wonder how long it would take the ASL producers to like type in the chat or pause the game or do something I, to like uh, announce to the players that it's possible. So. He, Mini probably knows. Ah, uh, see, he knows, he knows. Yeah, but he still has a, He might know, but he's still got a DT to defend. But the thing is, it's he only has one nah, unit. He, he can't he, send he, it across the map. He's so mad. You can see his reaction. Well, I'd be he, mad too if I'm winning, like I'm making the biggest comeback of well, all time. Oh uh, my gosh. I was going to say, well, <laughs> he could have still uh, flew around with the probe and built a pylon somewhere else while the DT went to deny that base, but I think it would have just been putting off the inevitable, and I think Barracks is gonna be... Oh my god, that game, man. That was that was an in, insane game. That may have been the closest game I've ever seen. Like, I, I've seen draws before, but it's like very evident that it's gonna be a draw. This one, though, it looked like Barracks just, he's in the driver's seat. There's no way many could come back. Then all of yeah. a sudden, like you said, every single SCV dies. There's no comm sets. DT, what was it? Two DTs and a goon blowing up every mine. <laughs> that, yeah. I mean, that was really good uh, heads up play from Protoss to find the only way he could win in that game. Uh, but it wasn't enough. And it, I can't understand. Like, I mean, I can't emphasize just how far ahead Terran was that game. Uh, and one of the crucial mistakes is Terran had no... In, in these positions, uh, Protoss often goes for these types of shuttle counterattacks. So uh, even in an even game. So he should have had like turrets at his main at the very least, which he didn't. This Vulture drop did so yeah. much damage. Yeah, Protoss legitimately goes down to something like 12 workers or something here. Zealot, when the Zealot cleared out these mines, I thought maybe the goons could actually hold. But as he pointed out, this was a support bay rush instead of observatory. So he has no vision at all. And then he missteps like crazy right there. Yeah. This is so many probes. Doesn't transfer any of them either. So they're just getting blown up. Now they cannot run away. Yeah, and that was just... Uh... An insane build order selection there from Barracks. There's really and and Mini. I mean, Mini contributed to that too. He just assumed Terran was expanding, so Barracks came super prepared, man. Against Rain and against Mini, he gets that win, and uh, yeah. Well, hopefully this first game is a sign of games to come because we've got Royal versus Hero. That should be an epic match. But before we go into that, of course, we've got a break, and then we'll be back with that specific game.
And we are back. We just saw one of the best games of all time in ASL. Crazy game between Barracks and Mini. Now we're going into Royal versus Hero. Barracks waiting in the winner's match. And man, maybe Barracks can actually do it this time, but it's going to be a tall order regardless of who comes through this side. I mean, it would be so hype if Barracks uh, made it into the round of eight for the first time, especially in this group. I mean, this group's just so insanely stacked. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see because he is awaiting, as you mentioned, the winner of this game, Royal versus Hero. Another best of one, another best of one on a three-player map, actually. Um, so that's uh, three-player maps can be the trickiest in terms of variance because, you know, one player can get super fast scouting info and then the other player might not. But I mean, in TVZ, generally, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, and you were talking about how good Royals Terran versus Zerg was on his profile. It said 65% win rate overall versus Zerg, but most 10 most recent games, just a 30% win rate. Meanwhile, basically 50% for Hero, even in his most recent games, around 50% sitting at just 40%. So, should be a good matchup, I think. Yeah, Royal um, definitely losing a bit of his form since the season where he won, essentially. So uh, I think that's also partly due to other players kind of figuring out his style. Um, Royal's basically, he always tries to get an advantage through the build order. Uh, he's a very tricky player, very, very tricky player. And that can lead to some pretty high variance stats as well. You know, sometimes his plays just don't work out. But of course, he backs that up with the in incredible fundamentals. And and this guy, Hero, I mean, this guy is probably the... He's probably been the most successful kind of player, one of the most successful players in ASL in terms of just consistency for the past X amount of seasons. Yeah, Hero, you always... Like, you just write him in round of four. Like, that's just where he always gets to every single time. But our players are ready. So let's get into game two. Royal versus Hero. Barracks waiting in the winner's match. So in the top middle are Terran, it is Royal. In the bottom right, the Red Zerg. Hero. Mm, you're feeling that one. Yeah, well, the red, man, it gets me all aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing blood. Yeah, and if you're playing Barbarian in Baldur's Gate, I know you're seeing a lot of blood. Uh, I'm frenzied up yeah. right now. I've got my big two-handed axe. Well, look at this. We we're talking about BBS from Artosis. This could be an Artosis oh. playbook right here. This might be not just an eight racks. We could see something really aggro. But either way, this is going to be... Uh, it's a six, six racks. racks. Now, I, I remember somebody telling me just a couple weeks ago how a six racks is a kind of a troll build. Yet here it is in ASL. Um, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. I don't either. Was that me? Yeah, that was you. You talk. I was telling you. I was saying how when I play speed, aka sexy, aka ten minute flash yeah. on the ladder, he likes to six racks me on Eclipse. Yet here we are. Yeah, but oh. that's TVT. Oh, okay. I'm, I don't think I've ever seen this in in TVZ. I really don't think I've ever well, seen this. Well, I okay, got. A, that's a nine pull, or is that an over pull? I think it is an over pull, and I agree. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I've seen six racks in TVZ. And I can tell you a hundred percent with with 100 percent certainty i have not seen a six racks into an overpool so i don't know you would assume overpool's got the advantage but there's going to be so many marines yeah. maybe terran can overrun yeah that's uh that's what i'm thinking this i uh, royal he's he's incredibly smart with these uh build orders so there has to be a very specific reason why he's playing like this will the scv poke past the net yet yes it will and now he knows it's overpool that SCV scout timing is about standard, I would say. So I don't think this is too suspicious from Zerg's end. Yeah. And here's the thing. Zerg will only make four lings and he has no additional scouting information. And luckily, luckily for a Royal, and this is what I was talking about, three player map variants, uh, the Overlord went the wrong way. Oh, he's lifting. 
Oh, I thought I thought he was lifting his racks. I saw the depot come down, and I thought he was just going to build three marines and lift back to his main, but not going to be the case. Either way, he's putting down a wall in case he has to retreat. But like you were saying, generally when you overpool, it's only like four lings, and we're going to have... Uh, the no, marines... Wait, did he make... Oh, he made six oh, lings. Well, this game's well, over. Well, I don't know. Okay, I, I, I don't think it's over yet because we thought it was over last time and it ended up going for 20 more minutes. But I, I forget people hate uh, people hate it when I when I say that, but that that's pretty much what Zerg kind of needs to, to be in this game. But dude, uh, uh, this timing, this is all it comes down to. Well, all of his lings are out of position, but to be fair... All of well, Terran's units are out. Yeah, this is all you all you have to do, I think, is you just build a, 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 a sunken. But at the same time, what if Terran builds a bunker to the left side of the hatchery? I, I can't believe the over the Overlord going down there was absolutely massive. And Hero, well, he is the thing is he can't repair the racks. And the, if the Lings attack the racks instead of the depot, it'll definitely go down. A sunk is up, and will the Terran? Nope, there's no DPS there. And the, I mean, Zerg's safe. Yeah, Zerg's safe, but if Terran repairs this depot, he's also safe, but he doesn't repair it. And that means Lings are going to get in and start racking up a lot of kills. The hero behind this, you know, he's not... Yes, he's on one hatch, but he actually has a lair coming. And surprisingly, one hatch mutilus can be strong. Yeah. So, a, a Royal's in big time trouble. What what does that say? Se what is he mining with? Six SCVs? Well, he's mining with six SCBs. He still has a lot of workers in the middle of the map, but as you said, Nyokin, one hatch spire in this situation, it's no joke. Like, uh, the Munalists are insanely strong. Why? Well, of course, it's just one hatch reproduction, but Terran has no stim marines, no range marines. I mean, no range, no stim, obviously. Uh, he's also just gonna have one barracks marines and he's not gonna have medics like look at how long it's gonna take for Terran to get an academy out an ebay out uh, so yeah of course it's only gonna be three mutalists then four mutalists then five mutalists but they can put on so much pressure so quickly yep and drone is going to be denied by the way hero's defense was basically perfect puts the sunken at the top side to prevent you know, bunker getting set up there and preventing mining, and then also the sunken on the left side to prevent the marine plus bunker combo to take down the lair. So that's exactly what he should have done. Now Royal's going to try and transition into the academy, but academy's halfway done when Spire's three quarters done. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be super hard for Terran. One thing Royal has going for him is that he's denying the natural, so it forced the hatchery to be placed inside of the main. Uh, which is fine for Zerg. They just want that extra production, with the larva. Of course, ideally, uh, Zerg would have wanted the access to the second gas, but he has enough gas from the first geyser to get up to six mutas. And then after that, he'll be able to make one muta at a time for a while. And, uh, you know, he's going to be able to put, put on a lot of pressure here and he's going to have a lot of production behind it. But uh, Terran. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I think this is a good spot for Zerg, but... Yeah, I, I think if Terran could have held that wall, everything would be in time. But now that there's three mutas out, yes, I don't think these three mutas will end the game, but they're going to deal a lot of damage. The eBay's not even complete yet. Like you said, there's no stem, there's no range. First medic is out, though. So that will push the mutas back for now, simply because the muta count is so low. Yeah, I mean, he's going to come in here and he can dance around these marines all day. And there's a lot of, look at that, one marine going down. This is just three mutalists and look at how much damage they're putting on it. Then I, the more uh, hero softens up all of this, once the seven muta timing hits, which is where he can one shot SCVs and where he can actually fight the turrets as well. Uh, it's going to be very difficult, but at the same time, Zerg cannot afford to lose any of these mutalists. Yeah, you definitely don't want to lose any mutas, especially versus marines that don't even have any upgrades. And of course, as I say, that stim kicks in, but it's no range, and no range marines are just not very good versus mutas. But at least it keeps the mutas back. It allows these medics to not be completely depleted on energy, but here he comes for round three. I mean, this is still hard for, for I mean, it's hard for both players. Zerk has to make these mutalists count. He has to, you know... I constantly find spots he should go blow up that bunker there's only two marines in it 
Yeah. I guess he doesn't know exactly. Yeah, go blow that bunker up, take your natural, and then you're just in a fantastic position. I think by the time Terran can get out onto the map, some, uh, hat should be done, which means your sunkins are probably done. Yeah, and uh, he can just keep making mutas forever here, and Terran has to respect this. And I mean, it's going to be hard for Terran to ever move out, because as soon as he moves out, the mutas are going to come in and kill these turrets. And uh, I mean, this is just looking so dire for Terran. Yeah. In this this building that the SCV wants to build by the barracks, this has to be a factory. Like, I don't see any other building that could go down. If he goes three racks, he's just gonna have no tech. It is a third rack. I, I, it, it's it's funny because I feel like he needs three racks to not die versus yeah. the mutas. But if you go three racks, you have no tech, which means you're like have no mid game, and the mutas are just oh my goodbye. Yeah, and we'll, we'll play. as the observer was uh, pointing out, plus one finish before the middle of and that was it. GG gets called Royal. What was that? What was that six racks, man? I don't think I've ever seen that <laughs> in my entire life, and I'm not quite sure uh, what what it was he was hoping that would accomplish. Um, uh, of course, if Zerg, again, the fact that Zerg made six links instead of, let's say, two or four, uh, that was quite bad for Taren. Uh, but at the same time, even if Zerg made like two or two or four links, um, I guess actually, luckily, actually those five links that killed the depot kind of won the game. Yeah, getting in and disrupting the mining really set everything back. My my own theory on the six racks was I think this was what he was planning. Is he gets out like four marines? If it's an overpool, yes, the links see it, but they don't see the marines on the high ground, so they walk up. I guess in theory, like a couple links walk up in, in together and he just pops them immediately and can immediately counterattack with his SCVs and Marines. But the thing is, is Hero led with one Ling pretty far ahead. So he's able to retreat most of them away and only lost one. Um, but yeah. again, I, I don't know because six racks, it's super rare. You almost never see it. And I, I agree. I've never seen it in Terran versus Zerg. We're getting a look at the final moments here. It's just not enough. Even though it's, you know, was one hatch into very late second hatch, two racks just doesn't beat that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go on a big rant, but we are going to get uh, <laughs> a, a break soon. I think the big thing is Royal is very, <clears throat> very well known for his eight racks. And, uh, well, whatever, guys, there well, is a break. We're, we we'll got save... the chair. Oh, we have the chair? Yeah, we got the chair. Whatever. Go well, then, rant, there you go, the chair, the rant. Well, I mean, who cares? Everyone's going to skip. Oh, okay. we're putting you on. Yeah. Everybody wants to see the big jip rant. Uh, well, I'll just say that <clears throat> he's known for his aid racks. So in my mind, the only reason he would make, um, like, from Terran's perspective, from Royal's perspective, his build needs to counter overpool, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, very likely Zerg's going to overpool him. And the only reason he would make a change there is if he saw something that was strong against Overpool. Because it's not like 6 racks is going to be better against 12 hatch than 8 racks, you know? Yeah, so, well, because of how easily Hero dealt with it, especially after, you know, being able to just immediately cancel and go for Sunkins, I'm sure Royal will answer, like, viewer questions on his stream, like, why did you 6 racks, man? I'm sure Jinjin Jin will translate that, or somebody will give us intel on what the choice was but it was an interesting build it sets us up for barracks versus hero now i feel like this is the best it could have gone you've got barracks now playing a terran versus zerg versus hero who apparently is struggling a little not necessarily struggling but uh, he's much better versus protoss compared to his terran yeah i mean we'll see how barracks manages to to hang in here of course it's still a best of one no it's I best think... of three that's the three. No, 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 is it? Yeah. In the. Yep. You in the it. winners. Yep. Winner. I, I, yeah. Best of three in the winners. I, didn't I, didn't Solky and Bisu play just one game? It was that quick, but they did play twice. Had the well, ling all in on Blitz, and uh, then the Hydra all in on I'm Citadel. Trolling. I'm trolling. Right. Like I don't know why I thought I. Yeah. Okay. Well, best of three. I think that's gonna be very difficult for Barracks then. Well, I mean, he showed that he's got some tricky builds planned. He had that one base starport play. Barracks is all of a sudden, or not Barracks, Royal pulled out a six racks. Maybe he's also got another tricky plan, uh, tricky build plan versus 
hero or maybe he's thinking like wow royal tried to play something aggro also maybe i should you know fall back on something standard or a little more greedy like one marine expand or something yeah um well we'll see what he has prepared uh because i think so far at least for his best of ones he came super prepared mm -hmm. um but uh, best of three completely different since you can't uh, rely on on tricking your opponent constantly unless you have some insane uh some insane preparation uh but but it's hard because like he wouldn't know is it and i think it would have been more likely for him to play royal uh here than than hero so we'll see we'll see i mean we'll see um what what do you expect to see in this uh series i think barracks has shown his aggro play versus mini and i think he's just gonna play normal i think if there's a rematch versus mini maybe he'll play aggro again but i don't see anything crazy going on if there's something crazy i think it's because the map is crazy and when yeah. i say that i think that only happens if troy gets through otherwise if we've got citadel retro you know blitz i think it's just gonna be a normal game well let me ask you this there's mm -hmm. a new final fantasy 14 patch oh not am i gonna see you uh playing that game ever again maybe but i doubt it but actually even though you're playing Baldur's gate oh we're going into a break but i'll oh, talk about that it. when we get back <laughs>
And we are back. We've got our winner's match coming up. It's going to be Hero versus Barracks. Barracks had an insane game <laughs> versus Mini. And then we actually had a pretty crazy game of Royal versus Hero. And here we are with another TVZ. Yeah, the first two games of uh, today have been uh, entertaining, to say the least. Uh, the second game was a bit shorter, but yeah, this does set us up for Barracks versus Hero. Best of three. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. We're just waiting to see those bands, man. I'm waiting to see somebody let Troy through, but I don't think this is going to be the matchup where it actually gets in. Barracks doesn't strike me as someone that plays like Wraith style, which I think is actually the go-to build for Troy. I don't think Hero is someone that would want to play on Troy either. Um, but, you know, you never know. Yesterday, Bisu made some at least surprising bans to me. He banned Radeon, and I feel like that's a good map for Protoss, but he didn't want to play that at all. Yeah, and uh, apparently... Um, I just looked at the chat. Uh, Royal did make a video on, on the oh, sure. track, so I am going to definitely check that out. That's interesting, but... Uh, yeah, Radeon is going to be game number one into Dark Origin, into Blitz. So, actually, uh, this is going to be a very important map for Barracks because Dark Origin is very good for ZVT and Blitz is very good for TVZ. So, Barracks really wants to win this game because otherwise he'll be up against the ropes, obviously. Uh, but yeah, the game is ready. Players are in the lobby. Barracks versus Hero. Get into it. So in the top right, we do have our Terran. It's Barracks. And in the bottom left, Hero in the blue Zerg. Well, Mihai, before we got into the break, you're talking about Final Fantasy XIV. You know, last year when I told you that new expansion was coming out, I asked you, are we going to play together? Maybe then. Yeah, the, no. What was it called? Dawnbringer or something? Dawn Trail. Dawn Trail. Okay. Uh, let me tell you something, man. Yeah, tell me. Since I have to educate you on this. In Final Fantasy, you play for the story. All right? I know you play for the story. And the story, I know you know. And the story peaked at Shadowbringers and Endwalker. Okay, the last two expansions. Okay. Now, spoiler alert, they basically finished that story for this new expansion. So, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not really, uh, I don't think the new expansion is going to have like a, as good of a story. So, I don't, I don't see the point. You understand? Okay, so you're all ready. I'll be I'll be waiting for you in Baldur's Gate three instead. Okay, man. I want to know what class you're playing, what race you're playing. Well, I might install it just for you since you're uh, new to it, and it sounds well, like it could be we fun. Have, then we have to find two more people. Well, to you play got with. two more. You got Phil and uh, Harry. Uh, we, I have a, yeah. Well, Phil and Harry, but we have we already have a play group, man. I mean, I, we I have to con oh. some other players. You know how I work. Okay. okay, when I play a game, a new game, I always tell all my friends, yeah. guys, this is the great... Actually, yeah, one of my friends made do. this this meme. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the Charizard meme. No, yeah, there's no way so. you have. I, I don't know why I would ever even ask that. <laughs> uh, but it's basically, I go through three phases. I'm like, oh, this is the best game ever, and I, I, I get everyone to, to buy it. And then I... I'm playing it a bit more, and then uh, shortly after, I'm like, "Wow, this game's absolutely garbage. I'm never playing it again." And that's that's around the time when I actually convince my friends to play, and then they're like, "Hey, Jip, when are we playing?" I'm like, "No, I'm not playing that garbage game." Yeah, I know. You've already baited me into other games, and what's funny is, I, I, oh I yeah, was, what's was, the I, last I, game I baited you? Oh in? yeah, chat, go watch the vods from last week or two weeks ago about, about last epoch, epoch and notice how he's already on stuff. a new game, and notice how I didn't buy it because I knew I wasn't going to get baited. Anyways, this is a normal opener from both sides. We've got Rax on the low ground that going for the wall. Barracks does not have anything tricky going on with the gas in his main. And this was a two minute pool, two minute gas, two hatch play, the typical play from Hero. Yeah, very standard game so far. Looks like the drone is getting hit, but it will evade. 
capture, death, and barracks getting the scouting done as well. Um... Yeah, I mean, nothing too crazy so far. Zerg does see really oh. early Marines, though. Okay, he's going to get into it. He looks him in. That's, that's massive, actually, yeah. because... Actually, well, it's massive because he does get to see everything. Yep. Uh, but even in, in so far as uh, standard play goes, he, he sees that, that Heron's not making more Marines, so he's not going to push uh, or pressure anytime soon. Yep, he also sees the gas timing, and usually this type of gas timing, three-minute gas timing, is generally like an eBay timing. But as I say that, I don't see an eBay. There it is. Yeah, this of eBay is uh, is a bit delayed actually. So that was tricky because uh, generally, like the eBay is building while the uh, the oh, gas is building. Look at that. He may have gone for this because he knows it's an eBay opening. He knows that the academy's going to be late. If if uh, Terran scans with a late comm set, legitimately there could just be lurkers right outside of his base, and he immediately kills him. And we've got more Ling coming in, so this could be an all-in Ling Lurker bus. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it's strong against everything. I still, I'm not quite sure if Hero knows this is an eBay build, because again, usually the eBay is building by the time the gas yeah. is finished like that. So, I, I don't know if he thinks it's eBay or Factory, but in, in any case, I think a Lurker bus is good uh, in general. But, 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 uh, that is a second gas from Hero. He is making more drones so this isn't gonna be entirely all in there's uh, there's another way of doing this where you're just massing links non-stop obviously uh and generally it's one gas but with two gas this to me is signaling that possibly hero still thinking about playing a long game yeah this is either a massive lurker or, bust, yeah like just billions of lurkers or this is additional gas so he can go into fast hive, or I guess it could be a muta switch, but that's really rare if, if they're opening lurker. So I imagine that this is going to be like five lurkers into hive, but more and more lings being built. Yeah, and actually he doesn't have that many drones, so this is very committed. Uh, the second gas is gonna give him a lot of resources as well. Um, actually, he's still, oh no, he has 400 gas banked. Okay, so he is gonna morph these lurkers. He sees and, it. Yeah, that's a lot of lings as well popping yep. off. That was a good scan timing. He, he scanned the right base. You know, a lot of times Terran players will scan the natural. And if he had scanned the natural, he would be yeah. thinking, oh, it's it's pure mutas. But it's actually going to be lurkers. And he's going to be able to get a bunkers down. He also saw lings being built. So he knows that it's a committed attack here. But I'm surprised there's only one bunker. He needs another one. Oh, and he has so many medics queued up, actually. So not... Not that many Marines. This is hitting at the timing, at the juicy timing where Terran doesn't what? have his barracks production what? in. What's he doing? His bunker's late. Okay, he focuses down a lurker, but he oh! doesn't die. There's also only one Marine in the bunker, and he just lets the Lings get on top of all the Marines. There's four lurkers that are going to blow up that bunker. Barracks is in big time trouble. These three Marines are trying to hold the line. Then goes our scan goes off, but doesn't have any units that actually deal damage. Yeah, the bunker's still alive, but I think it's just one Marine inside of there, and Barracks did not hold this like he should have. And, uh, I mean, Hero's on top of these Barracks, so... Yeah, he got way too greedy here. You can see his factory's basically done. If that if that factory was double bunker instead, I think he would have held, but instead, now there's three Lurkers on top of his production. I don't even know if a single Marine can get out from this position. More Lings being flooded across the map. Yeah, I, that was that is quite strange because he okay. Well, Barrett does GG. He did scan the main and saw a hydrogen and a bunch of links popping out. And generally, like you mentioned, Nyokin, I mean, you need minimum two bunkers in that situation. I don't know what he was thinking was happening there. Yeah, um, I, I, thought... it, it, I mean, it, the thing is, not scanning the nat, he doesn't see the total drone count. And in the main, he saw a bunch of drones. So even though the links pop, like. I don't know if he wasn't, yeah. Yeah, I think he knows that that was just a was just a blunder right there. He like he had the wall right, so the lings funnel in, lurkers can't just run by immediately. If there's a sunk second bunker right next to the depot, instead of lifting the racks and then building the bunker, I think he would have held. But of course, the the lurker hit much quicker than he was expecting because he there's no there's no world where he would have ever lifted his racks if he knew it was that quick. But either way. Hero gets the win, and you were talking about how it's important that Hero gets the win there, because now Dark Origin is coming in, 
And Dark Origin, historically, a good map, ZBT. So maybe Hero can close it out right here. Yeah, I mean, this is good for Zerg. And the game's already ready here. Uh, Hero is playing to get through to the round of eight once again. But can Barrack stop him? Okay, we are in Dark Origin, and we've got Terran at bottom right. And Zerg at top left. Well, you know what I'm going to say. Bottom right, we've got that full wall potential, man. So already yeah. I'm liking Barrack's spawn. Yeah, this is definitely the better spawn of the two, just for that comfortable wall. And uh, we'll see what he chooses. I mean, it, it uh, you know, uh, you can 8 racks with that. You can just play normally. Uh, Two-player map, oftentimes these days we also see eBay rushes against 12 hash openings. Um, hero boosting his drones. Man, there's a lot. You know, I've been playing a, quite a lot of... Well, I've been playing some Zerg recently. And let me tell you. Yeah, tell me. Bo the boosting is pretty tricky. Yeah, I remember Hawk making a statement about trying to boost in, like, turn rate 16 extra high, how it's just impossible for Zerg. Yeah, you know, but... Yeah, you know, but Hawk sometimes... He, <laughs> he, 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 he speaks in hyperbole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> To say the least, but Hawk. that is a depot. It's not going to be an eight wreck. Yeah, it's not going to be an eight wreck. When I saw the SCV goes down, I was thinking like this depot isn't going to be in time, so maybe it is actually going to be an eight wreck, but not going to be the case. He's going for kind of a, a weirdish wall here. Yeah. Where... Um, I mean, I think as long as the right side is is uh, linked tight, which I think it is. You know, I know you and I probably would put depot left and right side, but. Actually, I think this is a slightly, if if it's Ling Tai, which I'm pretty sure it yeah. is, uh, this makes a lot of sense because um, alternatively, if you have a depot on the left and on the right, uh, once the mutas are out, it's very hard to cover both with like a turret or a bunker. So I think this layout is actually, it makes more sense. Yeah, also, and, uh, also no, gives you more room after you lift the racks to just get out. Yeah. Like if you're ever in a deficit, and you need to just get onto the map ASAP, and you're not gonna get choked up. Oh, I, I can't Ooh. believe that actually blocked. So he gets the denied hatchery, that's fantastic. Yeah, this is a this is an oppressive opener from Terran, actually. Hero chose wrong, and this is part of why this matchup can be so difficult for Zerg. Uh, he actually opened, oh no, but he actually, this isn't even an overpull, this was a 12 pull, or 11, I don't know if it's 12 or 11 these days, Nyokin, but it was basically pull gas after Overlord. And uh, this is a lair rush build, but getting your hatchery blocked like this, and behind this, Terran's on a on a barracks expand. Uh, this this hurts for Zerg. Okay, now I'm confused by this wall. That's uh, I mean it is it is going to be tight, but uh, now there's only like it's a very small exit pathway for barracks. Like you said, this is a fast lair. I personally struggle versus this build, but I know a lot of Terran players have been rushing Academy. I don't know what your thoughts are, on, are for the best counter to this. Uh, I mean, I think uh, how Barracks is playing makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, recently we've heard a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, sometimes I wonder if if the, <laughs> if the audience ever gets tired of, of the Terran Cabal. Yeah, the Terran Cabal. Constantly talking about the Terran, the Terran builds, but... Uh, Generally, Terran here likes to go one racks academy, uh, but that's because you want to keep making units out of the first racks. But in this case, you see Barracks is actually cutting um, the Marines from the first rack, so he's going to get that second racks, and it's going to play out the same way. But I like this from Barracks. I think ultimately, from Zerk's perspective, uh, this is a very hard build to pilot because he's very tight on drones. Yeah. His fire timing is going to be very quick, but the drones, the drones are going to be very low. And actually, um, he wants to get a lot of mutas with this. And if you get a lot of mutas, you're going to play very low drone count at your nat. And then you're going to have a really specific decision to make. Do you cut mutas at some point to get your economy back on track? Or do you just commit to the all-in? Yeah, so Hero here needs to get damage done. Like, he cannot just 
screw around and you know yeah. hit a depot here and there. He needs to kill SCVs or needs to actually whittle down the marine count considerably. Two racks though is going to give Barracks a lot of production, but he did cut his academy timing for this. So Stim is going to be long ways away. Range also going to be really long. eBay coming in right now. This is a good timing relative to Hero's build. I, I feel like turret should be in time. Uh, this eBay is slightly late, I think, but we'll see. I mean, it all comes down to... Uh, it's going to be very tight, now, and wow. It all comes down to... Well, he is going to go for a push as well, and, and this is hard to deal with as, as Zerg because you just don't have that many links, but at the same time, look, the meters are morphing, so he doesn't need to put the sunk down. This is the, the strength of the Spire timing is it, it's actually not susceptible to this kind of pressure. Uh, so the tur turrets are going to be on time, actually. Uh, but yeah, look at that drone count at the Nat. Generally, when the meters pop, uh, Zerg's all if Zerg doesn't make any sunks, they're fully saturated at the net, as in seven drones mining, but he only has three, so very low eco for Zerg. Well, the mutas are on the way. Turrets are already set up at the natural right now. Uh, what is it? Five mutas or something like that trying to come in here, but turret is in the nick of time. It's a three racks, so Barracks not only is going to have a lot of units to defend versus mutas, but at some point he'll be able to counter, I think, pretty well. Turret is going to be denied, at least for now, by these mutas. Barracks is uh, is playing really nicely here. Again, he has a slight goal order lead from the beginning, uh, but also his setup here looks really, really solid, and he knows. You see how Zerg's just constantly making mutas? He has to do this to get some value off of these mutas. And, uh, well, one turret will go down, but so many turrets are getting shots off. The mutas take a lot of damage. Well, this is in my experience where it gets tough for me, where the mutas get into your natural, and you can see the SCVs, even though there's so many more, uh, turrets here, the SCVs are still under threat, but Barracks, instead of fighting the mutas there, he's just gonna move out onto the map and make the mutas come to him. However, it's it's dangerous to do this, and that's exactly why some Marines falling to these mutas. There's, some, what is it, nine mutas left over? There's only 10 Marines there. Well, he did kill one muta, and uh, these margins are always so, so, so tight, especially in these low eco situations. Th that was overall a good trade for Zerg. Zerg's getting so much value out of these mutas, and now Barracks is out on the map, but he, he is going to take another loss. He does kill one muta, so that was a decent trade. Second group of marines over the bridges. Yeah, there's no medics here either, so that's a dangerous... Oh, the, where are the medics? They're, they're not with the army. He's got it in the wrong hotkey, and the mutas that's are going to kill everything. Uh, that's all it takes. That was, that was, I mean, that was a massive blunder. The medics just went out into, onto another continent. Uh, they, they want, they don't want to be on Dark Horde tonight. <laughs> and I think I they want to be on, on Blitz right now. But, uh, uh, the Mutalists do clean that up. And now, I mean, this, this situation is, is just so bad for Terran. And, I mean, you can see Zerg still isn't mining with many, uh, drones at the natural. So, Still super low eco, but just these units are going to do so much damage now. Yeah, we were talking about how T uh, Zerg needed to have a big win versus the Marines or the SCVs, and he got that big win versus Marines. Now he's diving into the main. He's taken down the lone turrets. There's only two Marines to try and save it. The last turret's going to fall, and this could be it. Hero on the... Yeah, he's just going to take game two, and he's going to win the series. Yeah, and uh, I mean, dominant performance there from Hero, just both games, uh, super made it look super easy. I think, um, especially the second game, Barracks was set up pretty well, but then he blundered super hard, and you can see, I mean, that was just that was just well played from Hero, and you can see why he always makes the round of eight. Yep, it was really well done. Hero saw his opportunity on the bridge, and when you get opportunities like that, you got to take them because they don't come often. It's really rare to see someone not have their medics with their army, but well done from him. Barracks not eliminated just yet. He will be waiting in the deciders match, and we're going to be going into mini versus royal, surprisingly, as our losers match uh, coming up. Yeah, that's going to be a super hype match as well. Um you can see, well, this was the this was the key moment where Hero got such a nice trade off against even before this it was going. I mean, the supplies are even, so pretty even. But this is where the tide turned for Zerg and just great micro from Hero. 
Yeah, not only are the medics not there, they're they're not even watching their friends get bullied. I, I guess they can't they can't stand <laughs> to watch it. They're just like, nope, you're just on your own. And now now look at them. They're just running for the hills. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, dominant performance there. <laughs> kind of a mistake uh, from from Barracks, but uh, the hero immediately capitalizing on it and uh, just slamming through this group. Yeah, the thing is, is I think if Barracks was a little tighter just overall, like I, I liked his position on Radeon. I think his position yeah. on Dark Origin was also pretty decent. You know, I personally would have gone for what you said, which is the Fast Academy, but he had a lot of units. Like he had a lot of stuff. He looked like uh, he was, he was a hundred percent fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was nothing wrong with his build. He just, uh, I mean, he just didn't execute. Yeah. And it, it just, uh, just happens sometimes. Yeah, someone in the chat was asking why not rush Valks, but you gotta understand that spire timing was was super fast from Zerg. It's not really a position where you can uh, tech up as Taren. It's not the same kind of two hatch as uh, we normally see, where you go, you know, hatch spawning pool gas. This was spawning pool gas, so pool gas means uh, you're basically teching before putting down your second hatch, and that's super quick. So. I think uh, there was nothing wrong with how Barracks played conceptually, and he had a really nice setup with the turrets and the bunkers and everything, but sometimes it just comes down to execution, and especially in low eco situations, like it takes one moment to to swing the game. Yeah, and because it was that fast Spire build, he just had so many mutas, like an uh, uh, incredible amount of mutas. And by the way, at the end, even though we didn't get to you know mid-game, Hero wasn't all in there. He did have a third hatch coming down at his third base. So if they like traded armies or something in the game stabilized, Hero still would have been fine. Uh, so well done from him. Makes it out in first place. And we've gotten two Zergs into the round of eight now. One Protoss. Still waiting for that first Terran to make it through. Yeah. I mean, uh, people... I've seen some comments here and there crying about how this uh, season has been Tesagi. But... Uh... I think people don't realize that the, the there's like when we talk about a round of eight, um, the player skill level generally the the race distribution is actually quite even. So I'm not surprised that Terrans are dropping out at this stage in of the tournament. Yeah, and even though we've gotten don't have any Terrans out just yet, we've got like four or five remaining Terrans because I think tomorrow is Group C, which is two Terrans, two Protoss. And then I think there's also two Terrans in Group D, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But I would say the the only two Terrans that are... Well, Royal is still uh, in this group. <laughs> he, he can still make it out if he beats many, but I think actually it's going to be very difficult for him. And in Group C, uh, we have Rush and Light, so that's going to be... They're kind of like the, the two Terrans that are looking the strongest right now. Uh, group D, I think the Terrans there are not really favored to get out, especially against Action and Snow. So it's going to be oh, yeah. very difficult uh, to get any more Terrans, really, aside from Group C. So we'll see. I mean, Royal still has a chance here against Mini, but as we were talking about, as we were mentioning earlier, it seems like Mini has uh, the upper hand. Yeah, and if he can almost win a game with, what, two shuttles, two DTs, and one goon. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine what he can do with? I don't know why he army? plays the game. Why doesn't he just probe yeah. rush? You know, just send the first four <laughs> probes. That seems like it's all he needs. Yeah, I liked his usage of the probe plus the shuttle to clear up the mines. I think he realized that like near the end, like, oh hey, I can actually just get rid of the mines like this. That was quite cute. Yeah. Well. Um. We're going to go into a break after this uh, yep. interview, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, I just want to know what class you're going to play in Baldur's Gate. I'm getting ready. Well, since I already played Paladin. Mm, were you, you know, an What kind of Paladin? Did you break your oath? So, I like actually, oath actually I did a couple times. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, oh well, how am I break my oath? So, apparently, I was doing things where I was breaking it. But, you know, actually, my, my team was... Myself, Paladin, Asterian, Rogue, Lazelle, I guess Barbarian slash Berserker or whatever class she is, and then um, Shadowheart. 
I didn't actually play any mage classes, so maybe that can be my class? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's you, that's you. You can be a wizard. Yeah, I can be a wizard and just start nuking them from a distance. Yeah, I mean, um, all right, I'm excited. I gotta, like I, like I was mentioning earlier, I'm gonna con all my friends. Well, see, I already have the game, so I can't be conned, but all you yeah. other uh, all you other friends of me high out there, don't fall for his crap. <laughs> yeah, all of them, all, all one of them. Yeah, uh, he, Someone uh... in the chat was talking about how I need a friend. I know. I yeah. saw that also. <laughs> but Eskia out there, Redmond, Slardar, don't get baited by this guy. You know it's only going to last a week. Oh, they know. They know. <laughs> it's a full prize game too, man. It's a big date. Well, it's definitely worth it. I, I did enjoy it quite a lot. I, I should complete it, but it was just so long, man. I was like, wow, this is a really, really long game. Yeah. I mean, uh, apparently it was like six years in the making. Just Dang. That's yeah. quite some time. Well, we are going into a break now. It is going to be Royal versus... And I am loading up Baldur's Gate right yeah, now. Yeah, he's loading it up right now. <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes. So we are back and about to get into our losers match now. As you can see, Royal versus Mini is going to be the matchup. Mini had a crazy game versus Barracks, almost came back. Meanwhile, Royal kind of got blown out of the water in his game versus Hero, so he's going to be trying to strike back here versus Mini. Yeah, this is uh, well, both players on on the brink of elimination here. They don't want to go home, and I think they're both players. Well, they're both former champions here, so this is kind of a heavyweight match, and they would probably have a lot of expectations for themselves. So 
Very, very epic game coming up here. Yep, this should be a good one. We're getting a look at the bands and look at... No, we have a Blitz and Radeon ban and somehow Troy... Ah, uh, we don't get to see Troy. Yeah, I mean, I wonder what the map pool is for this, but uh, no Troy. Dark Origin is going to be rough to start on for Terran, but uh, it will get better in the last two games. Game is ready. Players are in the lobby. Game number one, Royal versus Mini. And in the bottom right, Terrans are always repping that pink color. It is royal. <laughs> yeah, in the top left. That's magenta, by the magenta. way. It, it is mini in the top left as the blue Protoss. Probe already going out, and this is really early, actually, so this is probably going to be a proxy gate. Yeah, this should be a 9 gate. I think if you're going to 7-7, seven, seven, it has to be even faster than this. But yeah, yeah. this is going to be a lot of pressure. Yesterday we saw this, Beastu versus JYJ, it was proxied at the natural. Yep, very standard opening. <clears throat> Pros can do a lot of things on a two-player map. Oh. And, uh, well, they all involve stealing the gas, but whether it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> whether it's a proxy gate or not, and it looks like this is going to be the same location now, um, we'll see uh, what the follow-up is going to be. I played a game yesterday against uh, one of the Korean amateurs and he proxy gated me and then when I put down on my second rack, he actually put down a second gate as well. Okay. And how'd and, that uh, go? He, well, I blasted him. <laughs> Alright, so it didn't work out well for him. <laughs> but it was interesting because uh, it was the same position Mini is using, and he actually walled in the, the Nat, so uh, anyway, it made me think of that. I don't think it's any good. Ro Mini's actually going to let Royal take his gas. Yeah, I think this is a... Okay, well, now I think it's pretty obvious that this is a proxy gate, because you're never really pylon blocking like that. You're always gas stealing, but Royal doesn't have any intel on what this is just yet. I, just, I do want to point out, first off, this probe might kill this SCV. And second, look at this Rax placement. It's it's pretty cool how he can go in between the depot here. But also, if he builds a second Rax above, that's also a, a way to get the Marine through towards the safety yeah. on the command center. So, interesting placement. I've never seen it set up like this. Double pylon. This is going to be annoying. So, Mini 100% baited Royal into taking his gas. He wanted Royal to take it, the gas because now uh, Terran's actually very, very stretched, uh, economically speaking. The gas is a huge. Uh, yeah, this is the classic Mini shield battery rush. Actually, Terran has very few workers here. Yep. And uh, he's oh. not going to have money to put down a factory. This is going to be very hard for Terran to hold. Oh, the Marine, it popped out on the wrong side, and I thought that he was actually going to lose it, but doesn't. The SC, or the SCV almost dies, but not just yet. The probe should get healed by the battery. You're talking about the classic battery. You know, actually, Eonzerg was talking to me yesterday about how Mini's the king of shield batteries. That probe is still alive, by the way, so he can build another battery if he wants, but the battery's gone for now. Protoss is putting on so much pressure. He killed two SCVs so far. The shield battery did die, but it did get some of its energy onto the Zealot. It looks like, oh my god, he's building another, and he's killing so many SCVs. Yeah. I mean, this game is 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 uh, going down the drain or very quickly for Terran. He lost so many workers. You can see he's he can't even afford a factory. Like, he's just dead, man. <laughs> well, that battery ends up completing, and that Zealot that was low health is going to heal up and that is crippling for Terran I think now the SCVs are oh I was gonna say kind of safe with these three Marines in the back to support but they are not another SCV almost gets taken down four Marines now uh, there's just uh, uh, again I think Pros Pros is also very low eco here a lot of probes need to be cut for this to work but uh, he's just snowballing so hard now all the Marines go down that's gonna be it there it is, GG comes out, and another quick one, Mini getting revenge for the first game. He went on full beast mode that time. 
Yeah. I mean, that was really well done from Mini. Uh, it, it is hard. On the one hand, as Taryn, whenever uh, Protoss allows you to take your gas, you want to take it. Uh, because the factory is what kind of uh, is your condition for stopping any kind of zealot rush. Because once the vulture is out, the zealots become very uh, ineffective. But in that situation, uh, when you take your gas on 11, you actually have very few workers. And then the yeah. pylon, the manor pylon prevents you from using two of the minerals. And then you have to idle a lot of your workers to kill the 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 pylons and the core and, and, and sorry, the shield battery. Uh, so that was a really well executed rush for many. Yeah. I wonder what Royal was thinking when he saw the pylon block, maybe he's thinking that this guy went 12 Nexus or something. I don't know, but either way, like he didn't even scout, like he never actually yeah. confirmed it was. You, a, you actually don't want to take your gas against that. Well, yeah, I, I, I agree. You don't yeah. want to have your gas, but if you're in that situation, I feel like, you, you need to at least scout and see whether there's a proxy or not. But either way, Mini crushed it. Shield batteries were pretty clutch there, healing up that hurt S, uh, Zealot in the back, racking up a couple more kills. And now he's one game away from making it through or making it to the Desires match versus Barracks. We're going into retro now. Okay, in the bottom left, no more pink. It's Royal. Yeah, serious cursed. mode. Yeah, and in the bottom right, it is mini or top right. Oh, yeah. uh, I wonder is is his uh is he randomly is he randoming his uh, colors? I wonder. Yeah, I imagine it must be random. <laughs> but we've got cross spawns here. <clears throat> this could be a twelve nexus game, man. If I was mini here, open with that crazy. Or it could be a 13 command center. Or it could be a it could see it could be a 13 command center. JYJ showed that it's possible to pull out versus Protoss. I on I <laughs> that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Uh well I I really honestly man, after I saw JYJ do that, I tried it once on ladder. And I, it's good man, it's good. It's unironically good. I think it's unironically good. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more command centers uh, soon. Well, how do you defend gateway pressure? Well, you don't, but you it, don't. That's not, okay, it's okay. not. Like, these builds aren't like, oh, they're going to work in every single situation, right? Um, well, yeah. But honestly, these days, like Protosses, they go 12 Nexus a lot. Yep. They go uh, rangeless Nexus a lot. Uh, they skip Zealot. They skip the probe scout as well. Well, it's not going to be this game, and this is, like you mentioned, Fall Nexus, and that Rax uh, is going to be a gas timing, so this is pretty much as bad as can get for Terran. Yep, cross map, Nexus first. You hate to see it as a Terran player, but at least he's gotten the really fast 11 gas. Maybe he can get something done with the quick Vulture. There's the Nexus, and there goes the Scout, and Mini's going to be feeling really great about his position when he finds Terran at bottom left. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be annoying. Of course, Tan can still play it out, but uh, this is, again, the build orders are, well, on the first game, it was just a kind of like mechanical, straight up, like, two-player, no variance, but this is good for Protoss. Yep, really good for Protoss. He's going to be up so many workers. I mean, he's very good with his micro also, so even if the timing is coming... It's going to be really hard to make it work. Oh. However, it's going to be the two-gate variation. Yeah. Cut probes, double zealot, double goon. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, a lot of the times, even with this, Protoss just gets the one single zealot. So it is very important. Mini will get to scout Terran very early on. And Royal, if he goes for the end scout, which there's no reason you, you wouldn't. Although he did see the probe. And it is less likely these days that it's uh, it's hard to tell. For Terran, it's very hard to tell because the probe timing varies wildly. Probe comes in, sees one Marine, doesn't really see much else. SCV with the in scout, not going to yeah. find Mini. Still in the dark as to what this is. And Mini here can adjust uh, his, his production. Uh, it's cross map, he sees everything. Uh, he can choose to not make two zealots here, which he doesn't need, especially cross map. Now you know Terran most likely is not gonna, you know, push across the map, cheese rush you. And I do wonder though, 
the probe did leave. I do wonder if he actually, yeah, he queued one zealot, but that's going to be it. And he's going to keep making probes now. Uh, just such a good position to be in as Protoss. Well, me, uh, Royal does now see the Nexus. He sees a zealot on the ramp. Dragoon has a very long. Oh, God, I don't oh! even. I don't even know how that got in, but Dragoon does he have a very. He right in there. Yeah, he just walked right in. Dragoon does have a very long build time, so Royal may be able to sneak in and get like one or two probes at the natural. Dragoon still not out, but you can. Oh, he knows that the vulture is coming and puts down a couple pylons to buy time. Well, he needs to this kill basically three probes to uh, even this out. And uh, that's not going to happen. And unfortunately, too, Royal's SCV is stuck inside of Protoss's main. So he can't... The other follow-up here would be the Proxy Starport for a drop play. And it's very hard for Protoss. Even if Protoss knows that your SCV is still out on the map and you're, you're, you're proxying, it's hard for them to move out because of the threat from the Vulture backstab. So Terran is in a bit of a pickle. Yep, Robo coming down. I saw that probe at mid left and I actually thought Mini was going to proxy something there, but it does seem like it's just hanging around to check if there's like a fast third command center because that is something some players do versus 12, ne 12 Nexus, but not going to be the case this time. No starport, second factory coming in. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Mini also went for the robotics before Archibald range, so super dialed in i think the probe when he scouted the main of royal he saw that there was no gas being mined at the at the gas geyser so he knows it can't be a kind of a, a similar build to what barracks did in the first game of the night and i think that's why he opted to also just skip range get this robotic super fast but i mean it is the standard build these days and that's... honestly going into this uh, mid game Protoss is uh an unhealthy lead for sure. Well, what do you think about Terran's Terran's build right now? Because this is a really fast third fact. Oh yeah, it's like that's yeah, yeah. not an eBay. Like that's a third fact. So he's he's planning to do something. Maybe he's thinking Protoss is gonna build a fast third base, but Protoss has not done that just yet. Yeah, well, Royal's gonna put on some pressure, but he will see this is not a Nexus here, and uh, I think part of it again, this is Royal's side showing. He's very. Uh, mind gamey, you know, he, he does try to get some Ooh. advantage. He, he does try and put his up. I mean very similar to how many plays this uh, There's nothing in the shuttle except the uh, goons and zealots. I think this is gonna be carriers man. That's a that's another Carrier positioned pylon like you said, it's unlikely that drops could be coming anytime uh, by now, so um, I don't think that is just for vision, but it could be either way shuttle is across the map but it had like a goon and two zealots i don't think there's yeah. a reaver in there this is a very strange game honestly um taren's playing super aggro he's already out on the map three factories like you mentioned shuttle is going to come in here but it is just gateway units one goon one zealot putting on some harassment but actually Terran's army is right outside Protoss' doorstep, and yeah there are no units here yeah the goons aren't even in position here i if he has siege this natural could actually get taken down. The goon eats a big shot there. He knows the shuttle is across the map, so even if there's a reaver, it's not in a shuttle, which makes it very, uh, very ineffective. Goons are gonna try and hold the line here. I guess he doesn't have siege, because he hasn't actually gone into it just yet. A tank gets picked off. Second That's tank. So yeah, this is some sick micro from Mini. He is going to kill all the tanks, oh. but mines do connect. A lot of goons go down as well. Just one tank left over, but this is three factory rally. Reaver is out. You know what's funny? I think Nyokin, uh, Mini probably thought this was a starport play, like a drop play. And I think what he did, like the shuttle timing there, there would have been very little thing inside of the Terran's uh, very few units. Uh, but it looks like he's going to hold on regardless. Well, he kills the turret. Now there's just two tanks, two vultures versus really not much for Protoss, but the shuttle is going to have free reign over this army. We saw what he could do versus the mines with the DT on, on Apocalypse. What can he do with a Reaver here? Well, the answer is that tank's gone. Those vultures are gone. This tank is, I, I thought, may actually be able to retreat. Oh, the Reaver. No, it does not get taken down. Dude, Minnie's playing out of his mind. Honestly, yeah. uh, all of these games, like, nothing's hitting his uh, shuttles. You know, the shuttles are constantly picking up units uh, when the mines uh, pop out. 
Mini's playing so well, and he's just completely dismantling Royal. Yeah, and what's hilarious to me is I think other Protoss players, when they see they're getting hit by a timing, gateways are flooding. Instead, Mini's like, you know what? I'm just taking my third base, and now yeah. I'll build gateways, because I'm going to hold it with just this shuttle. Yeah, Protoss is... Well, again, Protoss had such a good opening, too. Can't understate that, but now he's he's infinitely far ahead. Thing Terran went for this mix-up, three factory. You know, again, the standard play is to just get a dropship out. Why? Uh, because Protoss can't really do anything about it. And it kind of, you know, if Protoss expands too early, they have a huge amount of space to cover. Uh, and instead, he went for this three factory, trying to go for an attack at the main, knowing the army would be inside of Mini's main. Uh, sorry, an attack at the natural. But it didn't work out. And now... I mean, Pernas has third base, he has 20 supply lead, he has shuttle speed and reavers. Yeah, Royal's in big time trouble. He's going to be on the back foot the majority of the game. Fourth factory coming down, but that's just so he can build a bunch of units and not it, die. These mines just never connect, man. My, and Mini's yeah, playing so incredible this, this, uh, today, even against Barracks, even though he was like infinitely far behind. His units never got clipped by those mines, man. His shuttle control is just insane. Yeah, crushing it today. And by the way, it does not seem like it's going to be gate, uh, Stargates. It is, what was that, seven or eight gate for him? There's the Templar yeah. Archive. So this is going to be gateway style with Storm, most likely. <laughs> Look at the supply lead. Uh, this this just pains me as a Terran player, obviously. It's just looking so bad for, for Royal. And it's not quite clear. I mean, he can't really go for a timing. Like, he's so far behind, economically speaking. And we've been talking about how the meta has been this five factory, but like 11 minutes in, he doesn't even have plus one. Yeah. Well, uh, well, with it being the gateway style, you know, five fact does have a chance for that where they just sit there. Also, Mini's not mining his third base gas. So like he can't transition to carriers or arbiters or something crazy. He's also not taking a fourth base. I could see a situation where if Royal holds like one or two attacks, he can be back in this game, but instead, He's actually attacking. He's going to try and knock down mid-right. Shuttles are across the map. Actually, a lot of Mini's army is completely out of position, but he's just going to counter the natural. Yeah, this is going to turn into a clown fest real quick. And they, they're both kind of attacking each other. And you can't really read those situations. Double Reaver is going to do a lot of damage at Royal's natural. And Royal, because this attack came from Protoss before Terran started his attack, uh, Royal's been slow getting to that third base. Yep. Mini, though, he's inside of the main as well. Yep, Royal's in big time trouble. He's about to have like 10 Zealots, two Reavers, five Goons on top of his production. All the SCVs have been transferred to the main, by the way. So if they shoot the SCV line, that Reaver could rack up like 40 kills. He's already at 15. Yeah, I mean, this is just game ending damage. He's on top of the production as well. Mini doesn't mind sacking his gnat. Looks oh, like Royal's look, gonna try and go into the main. Look at this, we got a lifted command center. We've got, uh, you know, probably a lift. Yeah, the DT. DT's about to say that. You know the DT's were coming. There they are. Yeah, yeah he's got that K button. Nice and juicy there. GG gets called and Royal <laughs> goes down convincingly. Yeah, he got absolutely owned in both games. First game, you know, you can't really fault him. He, he rushed his gas, but actually was hit with a proxy. That's a really tough situation. 12 Nexus game, rough situation. Good pylon defense with uh, at the beginning to prevent the Vulture from getting in. And the three-fact timing, an interesting move. I thought he had an opportunity with the shuttle across the map, but yeah. clutch defense with the Reaver. Yeah, I think it's uh, it was meant to be a mix-up there. Again, like, uh, Protoss is expecting... A drop to come into his main, but actually Terran's going for an attack at the natural. Uh, I don't know, Mini dealt with that really well, and again, he had a nice, I, I mean, he had such a sick opening that what can you do as Terran sometimes? Yeah, I don't know, man, but clearly, you need to get the shuttle out of Mini's hands, whether that means building like eight Goliaths or double Wraith or something, you can't let this guy have a shuttle because none of the mines connect like at any point in this fight. Like if there's siege here, I really do think Royal's got a good yeah. push, but he doesn't have it. The shuttle gets back in time and then the Reaver just does so much damage. Well, I think this was just kind of poorly played from Royal. I don't know why he tried to push into the natural. I think if he just sat at this pylon wall and, and started mining earlier, 
uh, and just waited for Siege. This was unbreakable. I actually think Terran should have won in this. Uh, I mean, Terran should have won. I, I think Terran would have had a really good advantage just sitting here. Uh, this was a key moment, but he tried to... He saw a bit of a weakness and tried to push past the pylon wall yeah. and just lost so much time setting up. Like, he could have had double turret here. Yeah, just kind of misplayed from Royal, I think. I was actually waiting for him to build a bunker because Marines in a bunker, you know, are way better than just Marines yeah. isolated by themselves. But the bunker didn't come down. That allowed the goons to get those two tank kills immediately. Also whittled down the third tank to very low health. And as I mentioned in the cast... While this is all happening, Minnie's like, yeah, third Nexus, I got this. He's still yeah. only on three gates at this point. Yeah, I think Royal had a good time, but at the same time, you saw the workers count there from Protoss was kind of overwhelming. He's already at 50 yeah. probes, and Terran was at like, you know, 36 uh, SCVs. So Terran was cutting a lot to make that attack happen. Yep, so we are going to be going into our deciders match, but we've got a break first. And then we'll be back with the rematch of Mini versus Barracks.
Oh, we're back faster than I thought. We are here with Mini versus Barracks as our final match. We saw Mini face off Barracks in the beginning. You can see actually Barracks got a win there in a surprising fashion. Mini was basically dead, made one of the best comebacks of all time. If you did not see that game, you definitely need to watch the VOD. Yeah, but this time around, it is going to be a best of three, so it's going to be much harder for Barracks to uh, come up with the... Uh... You know, we saw how how he almost lost the game where he had an infinity lead. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it's going to be hard here. And honestly, Mini looked so dominant against Royal. Yeah, and I think, I think he's poked the bear after game one. Unfortunately, Royal has already taken the brunt of Mini's anger. These two games that we just saw were just complete domination. No point in the game was Mini under threat other than maybe the three tank push, which still got blown up. Again, there's no Troy ban, and somehow Citadel, Retro, and Blitz get through. So I guess, actually, Troy's not yeah. in the map pool for this. I mean, that's the only way I can I imagine. I think these five maps are probably the the map yeah. pool for... Yeah, Citadel is going to be the first game here. I think uh, Barracks is going to be happy with that. Uh, he did ban Dark Origin after seeing yeah. that game. Yeah. Uh, game is ready, though. Players are inside the lobby. Game number one of this final match in Group B, Mini versus Barracks. Okay, in the top left, we've got our Protoss. It's Mini. Yeah, he's in that magenta now. Know, in the bottom left, the red Terran. I was, I was thinking the same thing. He's repping that magenta yeah. color. Yeah, the paint. You were telling, you were saying he was a former Terran player. Like, when though? Yeah, like man. when he first started playing, or I don't know. Like I've heard, I don't know where I've heard this before, but okay. I mean, it sounds right. Well, he definitely knows all the tricks. He looks Terrans like a Terran hate. player, man. He's so good. Well, <laughs> well, based on some of his moves, I I can agree that he does look like a Terran player because I feel like. Protoss players don't think about, you know, blowing up somebody's commsat and then building 10 DTs unless you know the pain of something like that happening uh, as a Terran. He, he's got the mechanics of a Terran player, man. He's not like a Snow. Snow has like very, I mean, Snow has very Protoss mechanics, you know. 200 APM, you know, the macro cycles don't matter, all about that mic, you know, all about that nice smooth control. But Mini, man, he, he plays like a Terran. Mini, I, I can definitely agree that he does have some crazy APM. Whenever I watch him his stream, I, I can't even follow what he's doing. He's attacking like four locations at the same time, while also coming up with kind of the weirdest comps I've ever seen. But he's going 12 Nexus yeah. back to back. Yeah, and uh, I mean, generally Terran's going to scout bottom right first, so I think that's going to be uh, fortunate for mini but second second position and also on this map actually the rush distances uh, for adjacent bases are very close together so barracks is definitely going to have the opportunity to to bust this nexus yep and likely there's going to be the end scout this time and he should find mini second so he'll at least be able to react to this. It was a 12 gas, by the way, this time compared to the 11 gas. You know, it's a you know, like a five second difference, not the biggest of deals, but it will allow Barracks to have more Marines if he does go for a push this time. Yeah, and uh, well, Mini is doing the same build he did last game. Of course, Barracks does have uh, the slight advantage of having watched Mini play uh, against Royal. So he can kind of put Mini on a couple different builds, but it is surprising that Mini would basically do the... Well, it's not really surprising in a sense, but he is basically doing the same build he did against Royal. Yeah, and the SCV with the end scout will get in in time to confirm that this is the exact same opener he saw versus Royal. The two gate cut. I wonder if actually being scouted, Mini will build Double Zealot or if he'll be content sitting on the one. There's the oh, next. He can actually just start his bunker already. Yeah, this is this is massive. The zealot. Oh, the is marine's not, here! What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He already pushed out with the marine earlier, and this is going to put a lot of pressure onto Protoss. 
Of course, he can't get this bunker out, uh, but those notice those three probes that are not mining. So that's yeah. going to slow. And, and Pernos needs every single bit of resource in this position because he is on double game. Yep. So whether this bunker completes or if Karen SCV pulls or not, like this is good damage. Lost mining time, really a big deal. That SCV is very low. Yeah, it's a smart move to retreat that. That bunker is never going to complete. And actually, oh, the probe buys some time. There's a drill, but he doesn't see. Oh. Okay, actually, it's not the biggest of deals. The vulture will uh, actually move out, but two zealots this time, as expected. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is kind of scary for both players. He didn't have vision to drill on top of a mineral patch, so that's going to be annoying, but he doesn't really need it. Uh, I do wonder, actually I wasn't paying attention to the resources, Mini might opt to go for a third Zealot here. Mini's supply and blocked! It's... He's supply blocked, man! Okay, oh, now he's he on is. supply block. I, I was a little worried that he wasn't going to be able to build units. The Zealot, oh. oh, you can't lose the Vulture! He can't. Yeah, this all comes down to the micro, and I think Protoss, he has a nice position. Double, uh, but the, double Goon, double oh, dead. I mean... Zealots, and the Zealots are flanking. Sorry, I meant, I meant to say Vulture is dead, and that's a lot of DPS to be lost. The goons are trying to get in here. The Zealot is still alive, soaking up so many hits. The probes are so strong also. And now there's two goons left over. Almost none of the probes died. I think Mini's gonna hold this. He's so kind of splitting his DPS though. Vulture's gonna die. But he has double goon that just popped from the gate, so he should be fine. Uh, these these fights can can look really weird because uh, it looks like Protoss is dominating in one second, but then quickly it might go south. But honestly, Protoss held this uh, pretty comfortably. Didn't yeah. lose too many probes, and I mean, Terran is super far behind now. If Protoss just A moves across the map, Protoss might actually win. There's no bunker, there's no mine, because Prod uh, Terran built like two vultures before the add-on. Yeah, he has nothing. He has literally nothing. It's that vulture is gonna die. Second vulture is obviously not great DPS, and the marine obviously not enough. Vulture gets taken down. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Barracks is proxying something, but uh, there's there's units in his main just killing him, and Mini rallying down even more dragoons. He's gonna up to, be up to five. I wonder, I wonder what Mini's thinking though, because he, of course he sees there's no command center. He can tell that there's no two-fact in the main. So who, who I'm telling you exactly what he's thinking. What's he thinking? Game's over. <laughs> the mines come out to save the day. And so now Barracks is really reliant on this hidden factory to get in here and do damage. Yeah. Oh, that was great. I mean, no. is that even a factory? I, I don't know. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, the vulture from here could go inside the main, the gnat, lay a couple mines and kill every probe in existence, but uh, like, Terran has to be super lucky for that to happen because one, one vulture is not going to do that much damage fast, and two, it's all about can it get in there between production rounds, but actually he's just going to come... See, like, it, Barracks assumes there's more goons at the gnat, and he can't yeah. know the timing at which they pop from the gateway. Oh, what? He's just coming in with the vulture! Now he's kind of shown that there's a vulture hidden out on the map, but I guess Mini still doesn't recognize it. Instead, he's gonna set up mines in the back. But I now... kind of like this from Barracks. He's you basically do? gambling that uh, if he can push these goons and they all die, and then the follow up the two factory wins. Yeah, I guess, I guess that does make sense. But we got vulture in the main. He's gonna start racking up some kills. Second vulture, actually. Oh, that add-on's gonna get taken down before. I imagine siege mode completes. The second factory is actually paying dividends. It's doing so much yeah, it for is. Our barracks. It is getting a lot of damage done, but now the goons are in position to start preventing more probe kills. The gnat? Oh, is the... No, there's a goon up in that. Yeah, it's just uh, these four goons as well. It looks like he's typing GG at yeah, barracks. does tap out and mini will win game number one yeah unfortunately once the push fails like that you're kind of just in a really bad position as Terran. the proxy factory was a cute idea if he could have synced up both vultures at the same time maybe he could have eliminated enough uh probes to feel like he could make a recovery but you're just such you're just in such a bad spot when you're down a command center this guy i don't think many even lost a probe during the push either so it's, yeah. it's really rough 
Yeah, when your cheese rush fails like that, it's just uh, impossible to come back from. It's super, super hard. And uh, especially with two gate, you know, they can just rally goons at your face as well. That was really well held from Mini. And honestly, I mean, Barracks had a good start, but he didn't pull the CVs in time, I think, uh, to drill them. And then he didn't pull enough. He pulled like seven, which is pretty conservative. I think he needed to pull a bit more and he would have won that fight. But as played, Mini does get the win. And Retro is going to be game number two. Barracks fighting for his term in life. Mini on match point and... If he wins, he will go through to the round of eight. Yeah, not only does he make it into the round of eight, our eight Terrans turn into four remaining Terrans. And we have two Zergs, two Protoss pushing through. Retro, another four-player map. We've had back-to-back -back 12 Nexus games. I'm, I'm actually going to go with, I think he made 12 Nexus three times in a row here. So I'm actually hoping that we could see BBS from Barracks. You know, it's very rare to see that, but hopefully, or I'm, I'm hoping we get to see something like that if it's a 12 Nexus. Anyways, players are ready. Let's get into potentially the last game of the day. Okay, in the top right, will he get, or bottom right, will he push himself through into the round of eight? It's mini. Top left is Barracks. Well, if you think it's going to be a 12 Nexus game, could we see a 14 CC here? Yeah, I mean, that'd be cool, honestly, to go Command Center first, but I just don't think it's something Barracks prepared because I don't think Terrans. I think we saw JYJ do it, but the revolution hasn't yet started, yeah. Niokin. Um, but you're right, I think if I'm mini, why aren't you. Why am I not going 12 Nexus again? Like that game on Citadel, that should be Terrans. Terran's uh, position to punish a 12 Nexus. Oh, Euro team. I'm not sure exactly what that right. is from. I saw that was the... very European, man. <laughs> okay, I don't yeah. know. I saw the Korean, the Korean house there, and then StarCraft, but I couldn't recognize what that was actually from. But thanks for tuning in to ASL and coming out. Yeah. And uh, Mini, will he put down a gateway or not? I mean, again, last game. If Terran was going to win versus the 12 Nexus, it would have been last game. So if I'm mini, I'm doing it again. Am I a prophet, Nihai? No, I mean, it's a very well-educated guess, man. <laughs> uh, I agree with you. I wish we could have seen the BBS. This would have been the perfect situation. Nexus first versus BBS. Also, remember, mini, I don't think, has been like scouting the center of the map. He's generally just been doing normal scouts, so he wouldn't have even spotted it, but... At least Barracks is going gasless here. He didn't take his nat gas. He'll have big econ as a follow-up. But is it gonna be a two depot command center or will he just plop it down? I would love to see him just command center on the low ground. Uh, in which case you would, you wonder to yourself, why not just go command center first? If he puts down a depot here, it is not as, uh, you know, as good yeah see like if he's gonna do this build oh he does have a second depot okay i think this is still a fine choice i think gasless here especially versus the style that mini's doing which is you know the two gate cut pro build double zealot build double goon like you don't have that big of a worker advantage as you could so i still think this is this is fine yes barracks is gonna be down workers but you know it's not gonna be like six it's gonna be like two or something He's going to see the bad news. It is 12 Nexus, so he's obviously not happy about that, and it's cross-spawn. Barracks, I think, is just not really adapting to the his, to the player he's playing. He's playing very cookie-cutter openings. Um, these are really strong, like, solid overall openings. Looks like he's going to put that. I mean, he knows he's he's pretty much uh, in a pickle. I mean, he, he's pretty boned if he doesn't do something, because uh, the variation that he opted to go for oh, is no. really bad against 12 now, Nexus. Now I'm, now I'm very worried, because look in Barrack's main, he took gas. Yes, yeah, that's... that's he's pulling yeah. now. But remember last game, he pulled with a vulture. Now it's cross-spawn. There's no factory. It's just Marines. 
Yeah, because he was doing basically he was doing the standard build. Um, he wasn't really he, he put down the gas. He was still gonna expand, but these days they put down the gas. No matter, you know, just to anyway. He completes so the bunker. bunker. Finishes, but... Yeah, he needs to get in there. Oh, the probe control. Oh, the probe control is nasty. He knocks down both Marines. Doesn't let anything in. And this bunker dies. Barracks was pulling for this. He, you know, he did a hybrid build with the gas. These two SCVs are out in no man's land. This is a disaster. Yeah, not uh, ideal for Barracks. Again, he's just trying to do the standard build, and then many. The thing is, the the ga like gasless isn't even good against this. This form of gasless is not good against twelve mixes. So. I don't really understand Barracks' mindset in this series. I think he's not adapted to his opponent at all. I think uh, he could have done something completely different, but he's just playing way too standard. Yep, and now Mini is going to counter with two goons, two zealots. There's a bunker here, so he'll hold it, but Barracks is I mean, in I, a world of hurt. I just don't understand because the, the previous game... Like, if you're Protoss, why would you, The only time you don't 12 Nexus... It's just running by the zones. Yeah, I, I, this is going to do so much damage. The previous game, like, uh, he had the bill order to counter the 12 Nexus, but he did not win the game. So if you're Protoss, why would you not 12 Nexus a game? Like, is Barracks thinking, oh no, this game, he's not going to 12 Nexus, he's going to go get expand. No, dude, why? You literally had the build last game to win, and you didn't. Of course, he's going to 12 next to him. Well, Zealots, so far, haven't gotten any kills. They do, obviously, force a lot of lost mining time, but that was a good hold from Barracks. Mini, he's just playing a normal follow-up. I think it's a robo follow-up. He's not, you know, going out of his mind, building a triple nexus off of just this. Yeah, just standard uh, tech from Protoss, and... The two zealots get inside, kill a couple SCVs. They also see a lot of, well, they see everything Terran's doing. I mean, Protoss is, uh, it, you, know, you know how we were looking at that bill order mini versus royal on this map retro, 12 Nexus? Well, we were saying he's ahead against royal, but against Barracks, he's even further ahead. Yeah, and I think Barracks is doing exactly what he has to do, which is camp the game out, rushes upgrades, try and just stall, stall, stall. Retro, you can get an easy third base. Fourth base is kind of far, but it's going to be really hard. He has no timing windows anymore. All he can do is sit here. That, yeah, if that was a third factory, I was going to lose my mind, but it is an eBay. Yeah, he's playing very standard. Uh, does have the armory. Just Protoss is playing with a huge advantage, and Mini is just building pylons everywhere. This does catch random dropships um, if they were to fly around. And uh, But Mini is going to set up for this third Nexus at the 6 o'clock. And Barracks, I mean, I wonder, is he going to go for a 5-pack like we've been seeing, or is he going to adapt and put a starport down early? Yeah, you look at the supplies and they don't seem like it's that bad for barracks but it is definitely not a great scenario for him turrets coming down tanks are in position reaver is i, I think this time there is a reaver i don't think it's goons to sell it like it was versus royal and here he comes yeah i think the supplies are a bit close because uh mini basically cut production from his double gate and this is why he has the seven minute nexus and the shuttle and the reaver and still goons out in front so mini is is super rich shuttle unloads the reaver double zealot as well and he wants his turret if he can knock down the turret he's gonna have free reign over that scv line doesn't actually get it and all of a sudden this reaver might actually get picked off. The shuttle dies, but he's not focusing. The reaver, he kills both the vulture and the goliath. The two zealots are still alive. The reaver's clearly still alive. He's now finally going to get this turret. These tanks might die. Goons at the front say, hey, you can't be defending everywhere. He's just going to run in on this tank. But Minnie's feeling himself doing that kind of move, and this reaver is doing so much damage as well. The shuttle, doesn't matter if the shuttle and the reaver got cleaned up. That was a worthwhile trade. He also kills the tank at the natural so he can slam this bunker 
I don't know if Barracks has a tank on the way to defend the bunker, but if this does go down, then the natural is also a bit susceptible, and the position's quickly crumbling for Terran. Yeah, Terran is in real dire straits now. I think a third factory has come down for him. Yeah, he's just now starting his third factory, but Mini, he's got his third base up and running. Like, he's already transferred workers over there. There's still no... Okay, now he's starting to build more gateways, but... Barracks, what can you do from this situation? You can't punish Mini for it with anything. You don't have a starport. You don't have vultures. All you can do is sit here. Yeah. And it's just, uh... Oh, it's so bad for Terran. And Protoss has triple Nexus up. Well, I don't know if uh, Mini's going to put down the fourth Nexus quite that early. But I wouldn't be surprised at this point if he does. <laughs> yep, there's the fourth Nexus. Uh... Mini can do literally anything he wants. Barracks is going to put down five fact. There's no observer in the base, so Mini doesn't have an idea that this is coming just yet, but double reaver drop coming? Or no, not double reaver, single reaver and two zealots. Yeah, and four gates up, but I mean, Mini, again, it is surprising to me that he put down that nexus and then opt to get a couple more gateways first, but he's so far ahead, that's going to explode his economy, and I mean, Terran's in no position to push, and Mini knows. Mini knows he did so much damage that he can afford to get this Nexus before all his gateways. That's going to secure his his economy, especially on a map like like Retro. Actually, it's very difficult to expand on this map compared to other maps. So, I like that adaptation from Mini. Again, Barracks is in a world of hurt here. Yep, Reaver's going to knock down this bunker. That means that these Marines are... Oh, is he just going to go for it? He knocks on the bunker. The Reaver got hit twice, so it's very low. Goliath almost gets the shuttle, but in the end doesn't get it. He does get a couple of goons, though. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, again, Pernas feeling so comfortable, so confident that he can do this. Double Robo, actually, is going to be the play. And now, finally adding more gateways. Terran in no position to push just yet but he is getting there i mean he has yeah. only five tanks Terran supply is you know okay I'm, i was looking at the probe count for mini in his main it didn't look uh, ab absurd his natural i guess we didn't get a look there his third base he just transferred a bunch of probes there so maybe he has more than i thought but you know i was expecting Mini's supply to be higher than it actually is yeah there's not really many probes at the at the third base yeah i wonder if he actually over transferred from there and Barracks is going to see that and think, wow, do I have a chance, actually? <laughs> but, oh, the Vulture is going to go bottom left, and he's going to see the bad news. Actually, he put also on four base, and that's fully saturated. Yep, and it is double add-on, five facts. What's that SCV going to be? It's setting up like it's going to be command center, but no way he can take mid-left. He needs to take top middle. That's by far the safest. Yeah. And, uh, well, Double Robo is online. He's going to be able to pump out Shuttles and Reavers. Terran is going to try and expand, I guess. I don't know if he's feeling confident enough to go for a timing Ooh. attack. That was shuttle, those go down. Yeah, that was the Hurt Shuttle. So this is these are isolated Reavers. One Reaver gets immediately killed. These goons, I don't think, are going to win the fight. So he'll be able to get up here on the high ground. Yeah. I mean, Terran's gonna have some space. Again, Protoss went for this uh, super economical line, I guess. So it's gonna take a while for Protoss' supply to really explode. But, I mean, even if Barracks takes this 12 o'clock, which it doesn't even look like, he's trying to keep, he, he's trying wow. to push still. Wow, he's pushing. I was gonna say, Terran's actually recovering quite well. You know, double robo is an expensive type of strategy to play. There's not that many gateways. It's at like seven right now. But with him pushing, I guess he's not going to take a third base. That's... I don't think he can win with the push. But if he camped, I think he could actually get his third base up and running. But double shuttles moving towards the left side. Yeah, I mean, Kronos has seven gateways soon. What is that? Eight, nine. And then double robotics as well. He's just pumping units out. And it looks like Barracks, he's not too sure what to do. Is he going to push? Is he going to come back? And uh, Mini out. is going for the counter. He's way out of position. There's no tanks, no Goliaths here. Reaver unloads. 
this does allow an opportunity for a counter. You know, mines are very strong. They can hold the line a lot uh, for a very, very long time. Two tanks. The turrets are actually doing a lot of damage. Barracks, this is his one opportunity to try and bring this game back. Yeah, can he do it? Reaver does unload in the map. It's going to kill a lot of SCVs, but that's a lot of Terran units and not the most amount of Protoss units. The shuttle doesn't actually have anything. The Zealots do get cleaned up. Most of the Vultures do die, though, so those tanks, they're not going to have support for much longer. And if the gateway units keep rallying in here, um, I don't know if Terran can sustain this push. Reaver is doing work. It has not fallen just yet, but supplies are surprisingly close now. 100 to 120. I think that shuttle still has a Reaver alive, but Barracks has a lot of stuff, whereas Protoss really doesn't. The, the Zealot Bomb is really good. Takes down a couple of tanks. Almost, it takes down three of them. Oh, the Reaver oh in the main, God. racking up so many kills. He's going to kill all the Econ of Barracks right now, just now realizing he's going to transfer some of these SCVs back. Yeah, that glimmer of hope is quickly DTs. A fading. DTs, the mini special. Counterattack into DTs. I think I've seen that one before. Mini, Mini is floating so many resources right now. He really missed his macro big time. 2k minerals. If this Terran army had like a, a turret or a couple more vultures, he may be able or may have been able to kill the natural and third base. But the DTs, yeah. oh, there is an SCV. So many this, DTs. Yeah, it's so strange that he's actually floating this many resources. He, he has the supply. Um, he also has the production. Like he has nine gate and double robotics. Like there's really no reason for him to be floating this much money. He also has triple gas. I wonder if he took his oh. gas a bit late, but. Those tanks survived, by the way. They're low health, but if they get repaired, that would be great. Oh, it's just endless DTs. Yeah, I mean, I it, it seems like he's almost panicking, but GG gets called. Barracks taps out, and Mini makes it through to the round of eight. Yeah, even though Barracks fell there, like, he had a really good comeback. That was a much better position than I thought he could possibly ever be in. Mini, I think, almost botched it right there, but those DTs were clutch. Obviously, the Reaver in the main, what did it get, like, 25 kills? Absurd. And Mini, he's always a killer in tournaments. You know, he looked kind of... I guess shaky in game one after the drop did so much damage, but he really turned on the heat in the last few series. Yeah. Um, again, <laughs> that looked kind of scary there. I'm not quite sure why it looked so rough, but of course, Mini, besides that, has looked dominant today. Even in the first game against Barracks that he did lose, I mean, he just got so unlucky and still managed to almost bring it back. His shuttle control is out of this world, actually. So... Well deserved for him, and uh, that means that Mini and Hero make it out of this group, which is not surprising. Mini, a former, you know, two-time ASL champ, and Hero, of course. I mean, this guy, he's he's always a seated player. Seems like. Yeah, and again, Royal. I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Royal kind of had a disappointing season last season. Uh, I can't remember exactly how he lost, but you know. Coming into today, I was talking about how Royal in important matches like Ultimate Battle, um, ASL, Royal's done really well versus Hero. But his game versus Hero, he got crushed. His game versus Minis, uh, he got crushed in that. Royal did not play up to par. Barracks played pretty pretty well. Like, this is a really good recovery. Now, this defense, though, is absolutely nasty. How, does, how do the probes block and the Zealots also block and prevent none of those from getting in? Yeah. I mean, just crazy. Um, I don't know. I still don't really understand why Barracks uh, went for that build, but uh, it is what it is, man. Yep, and that mini fan is happy to see that he'll be moving into the round of eight. So, so far we have Hero, Mini, Bisu, and Soul Key. Those are some stellar names already in the round of eight. Oh, wait, Mini only won once. Damn. I don't know why I have this impression Mini won twice. Oh, it's because he had a... Oh, remember that last versus Mini ASL? That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. And Mini's been in the final like three times, like four times. <laughs> yeah. He, he does really well when he gets all the way to the finals. Yeah. 
Well, this might be his season too. I mean, Solky's looking so nuts. Yeah, Solky. Solky has really good play. Yesterday, the the Ling all in kind of caught me off guard. Like, if you're willing to go for crazy styles like this, I mean, there's no you can't get a read on this guy. Like, is he gonna play macro? Is he gonna do the craziest build of all time? Like yesterday, also on Citadel, where his mutas didn't work, he's like, you know what? Double Hydra Den. We're just going for it. Like, he's obviously gonna be a killer, uh, a big time threat in the round of eight and beyond. Yeah, well, a good performance today from Mini, and uh, that's it, man. You know, on Steam, <laughs> yeah. it is the spring sale. It is the spring, spring sale, but I don't got my eye on anything right now. Do you know why I don't? It's because after seeing the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer, man, I went out and got yeah. it. I oh, got, you did. I got Final Fantasy XVI and the Seven remakes. Oh, my God. It feels like Final Fantasy VII, man. You've never even played Final Fantasy VII. Um, I, I do want to play the remake. It's good, man. It's like an action type of game, which I know you like, but it also has... I um, like action games? Yeah, you do. Yeah, for sure. I you think do. you that's what you like, man. No, you play Elden Ring. That's definitely an action game. You've got to have... Elden Ring is like a big boy, like big brain... Like action the FromSoft game. games are, are, they're not action games. They're for true uh, connoisseurs, you know? Okay. Well, you yeah. would definitely be a connoisseur of the Steam games. I have no idea about them. Yeah, but... well, I'm looking at this. Um, have you ever played Stronghold? I doubt it. Dude, it's an art. Stronghold, man. You build castles. Hmm. You, you never played Stronghold? It's like an RTS, like 2001. I've never like, heard of it. Stronghold Crusader? Holy. You know there's a definitive edition? You've never played this. No. Oh my I'm god. I'm looking man. it up right now. This looks Pog Champ, man. I didn't realize they made a definitive edition. There's like new missions in there. Well, there you go, guys. This is what we gotta play, the dude. The Baldur's Gate duo. It's I'm already over. About Baldur's Gate. Yeah, we're back into a different game now. If you guys out there already bought it on Steam, just refund it because Jesse's <laughs> no longer playing it. I think the yeah, the ASL chat they were ready, man. They they were like, oh, I'm gonna play with Gypsy. Yeah, they're looking they're looking for a couple more people, but he's already not looking anymore. No, no, I do want to play some Baldur's Gate. We just have to find a full party, man. We gotta I feel get like... Red playing that, man. But he's stuck on lineage all the time. You think I'll I'll message him right now. Dude, you want to play Baldur's Gate? Yeah. I feel like that's his kind of game. Well, you man. get like, Rhett and Skew to play that. <laughs> I can't imagine playing with Skew. <laughs> uh, well, half of the round of 16 already over. We still have Group C and Group D remaining. Let me check the player list for Group C before I make any comments. I well, know. yeah. <laughs> don't Don't be like me and be uninformed. Yeah, well, I saw someone on the YouTube uh, comments. They're saying, "No, can you better brush brush up on your ASL uh, history?" Yeah, I need to brush up on my ASL history. Yeah, did you read that one, dude? Well, you know, it's hard to remember so many games being played in ASL. Also, since I cast Starcast tournaments and I cast, you know, sponsored games, I can't remember everything, man. But in dude. group in group C, we do have. A really tough group. It's Rush and Light. And then we've got Shuttle and Best. And these two Protoss players have insane PVT. Shuttle's definitely underrated in general. His PVT is nuts. I think his PVZ, according to stats, was his best. But whenever I see him face off versus Light, like the games are always nuts. Like he's got like 30 gateways. Of course, when Best plays also versus these players, he's got 30 gateways. He's got like three quarters of the map. So it should be quite epic. Yeah, yeah, I was listening. I know you were. And also uh, yesterday, I was looking at stats on, you know, how, how does Light fare versus Rush? You know, how is right, Rush fare versus Shuttle? Did you know Rush is actually kind of crushing Light? So he might actually be the favorite favorite in that group we're getting a rundown of group b as we know barracks took down mini hero took down royal hero crushed through barracks mini crushed through the rest of them taking down royal 2-0 and then barracks 2-0 so many both are both mini and hero making it out 
And like I said, Group C tomorrow with Rush, Shuttle, Best, and Light. Yeah, in a sense, these games were pretty one-sided today. Like, none of these series were, were really close. So here we have the graphic, like you were mentioning, Naoki Group C is going to be sick. I'm looking forward to watching the two best Terran players play. Um, and I think they they will probably, well, I don't know. I mean, best could show some insane games. Shuttle's going to have a super, super hard group. Uh, and then Group D after that, I think Action and Snow super, super uh, favored. Well, that being said, Sharp did beat Action in the wild card to get the seed for this uh, for this tournament. Yeah, and also, even though we hadn't seen Mine for a long time, you know, when he played either last season or the season before, what he went all the way to the finals versus Royal. Like, this guy, he didn't lose Terran versus Protoss. Of course, he didn't play Snow, but he's very, very good. Also, his Terran versus Zerg is very solid. Generally, when I watch him play, he's playing like a three-racks defensive style into four-racks, just nails his build, and then kills you in the mid-game. I definitely don't think you can count him out. Sharp, like you said, though, playing really, really well. We've got the caster screen, which means we're going to Gypsy screen right here. There he is. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, Hotube just released a uh... Factory expand three factory vulture push in TVP. Oh no, this is TVT. Oh, I got baited, man. Yeah, and I was, I was, I was there thinking, I'm like, I don't know if a three pack vulture play is gonna be. Oh, I was like, dude, is that some new thing from Royal? Like, is that what Royal tried to do? Yeah, and when you mention Ho Tube, you of course mean EJ Ho, which is Light's real name on YouTube. You can search him. Yeah, and uh, we got a shout out Starcast TV right here. This is our channel. You know, we do a lot of casting in general in there. We've got the StarCast TV Star League. It just wrapped up. You should check out to find out who won there. We've got StarCast Season 2 coming. And then we've got another special tournament after that, which I know a lot of foreigners will enjoy. So you need to be looking for that in the near future. And of What course, special tournament is that? Can't tell you, man. Can't, can't, can't tell, tell you. Me? Nope. Okay. You just have to wait and see. Results are already posted on the Liquipedia, though. But actually, actually, I guess I can tell you that it's, it's an invite tournament, and there's going to be some international players playing in it, not just Korean. So that should be exciting. Okay, that's cool. Looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> also, right now, if you guys don't know, there's a Caster Muse tournament. Um, Artosis is doing that. And the reason I mention that is because I know a lot of players like the Chinese players, John Hoon, Xuan Huang, Mihu, they're playing in that. And Mihu is doing really well so far. Like he he played ample and he crushed. Like he's 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 killing it, man. I have hopes that one day it could happen. Mihu makes it in or John Hoon. You know, in this ASL, they went deep in the tournament, like the ACS qualifiers. Yeah, well, maybe they can get a bracket like C's. Next <laughs> you time. think they would have made it in? Yeah. Maybe. It's still a hard group, man. I mean, Harangi and Calm are not, you know, pushovers. Like, there's a reason that... like I'm Calm pretty was... sure Calm lost to Mihu in one of the qualifiers not long ago. I mean, possibly, but Calm was also in ASL, what, two seasons ago? And he made round of 16. So he not only made it yeah. in, he also got past the round of 24. But making round of sixteen is probably easier than qualifying. You're you're crazy. You're sometimes <laughs> you're out of your mind. It's just two best of best of ones. Yeah, right? yeah. Just it's just two best of ones. It's it could it's that simple. Dude, eight eight fifteen almost made the round of sixteen. So like it's it's not easy. Like you just watch these players pulling out six racks. TVC. We had back to back to back. 12 Nexus. Varric's pulling out one base starport. This, these were best of threes, man. Yeah, we'll but I'm just saying, you're ones. telling me it's super easy I mean, when you've got to account for all those types of... I never said I'm, I, well, no, that's the whole point. You don't have to account for anything. You just roll the dice. <laughs> okay. Well, you're playing in BSL. Maybe you'll be rolling the dice. I'll be looking for those dice yeah. rolls from you. <laughs> I'll be in, in the B League and then yeah. maybe the C League. Yeah. Uh, well, BSL is coming up pretty soon. Who's in your group, man? You qualify. Uh, you're playing soon. I am playing soon. I, I'm scheduled to you're play on this Saturday, weekend. but it sounds like it's going to be moved to Sunday. But I've got Raz, Stryker, and Tarson 
Striker, yeah. very good. I'm a little bit worried about that. I think me and Raz are kind of somewhat even. And then Tarson, you know, I play him on the ladder quite often. He's very good, so I don't think it's just going to Well, you, be... put the, you put the Koreans to sleep with that. <laughs> I did. I know. The stream's yeah, over. But they bowed out, man. Yeah, they, they were yeah. listening to your... <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hear about BSL. But that is it today, guys. Yeah, Thank I'll you. see you in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So we are done today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll be back next week with group C and D. Oh, look at that mine. <laughs>